over 50 million views. You're listening to The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. The Joe Cronin Show. I hope you hang your mother. This country sucks. This place sucks. CNN masturbated all fucking day. Dude, I will eat your fucking asshole out and then spit it into your mouth, baby bird style. Who wants to go? Call the show. I'll fuck your ass! (laughs) I want to kill myself! Joe Cronin Show. I'm going to start the show in just a second, guys. I'm a little bit behind watching Moxley come out looking like Snake Plissken. Uh, coming out like a psycho with a microphone. Subscribe if you guys are new. We're about, we're about to do the review. I will eat your fucking asshole out and then spit it in your mouth, baby bird style. Who wants to go? Call the show. I'll fuck your ass! (laughs) I wanna kill myself! Joe Cronin Show. going on everybody it's wednesday night baby the wednesday night war is in full friggin effect everybody is wet right now i'm telling you right now i can feel it everybody in this chat right now they got a feeling man it's coming up from inside them and it's getting long it's getting hard it's getting wet it's getting wild it's getting sloppy and it's getting full on ladies and gentlemen jake demarco there he is. Yeah, baby. What's going on? He is here. We're ready to party. Unbelievable. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, a lot of wrestling news today, like I said earlier. Just an insane amount of wrestling news today. It was like almost a, a ridiculous amount, but uh, nothing was better than this clip. Unfortunately, Jake is not going to be able to hear this. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, this just in, the latest sound clip that I have. Of of Mr. Drew. Testicle Festival. <laughs> he actually said that earlier today. Testicle Festival. Uh, so that goes along with this. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. 
If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Testicle festival. Uh, but yeah, so AEW, man, um, I'll tell you what, this was an episode that to sum it up really quickly before we get into all of it and talk about everything else. This is a show that started pretty hyped up and uh, then it started kind of crashing down a little bit and then it just went woo. It went like into like my pleasure zone. Um, much better show than the last couple weeks. And the best thing about tonight to me was that they finished strong. The show started building. It kind of it started it started rising up high and then it dropped down really low for a second and then it boom it started going back up again and then by the end it was nice so uh, I am pretty happy with what I saw out of uh, AEW tonight for the most part there are some things to criticize and we'll get to that but I think we'll start right at the beginning uh, you know with that big opening match uh, but oh that's my quick really quick overall feeling. Of what I saw tonight. What the hell have I done to your screen, Jake? Let me fix the. Why do you look? There we go. Uh, there we go. Hey, yeah. What did you think? Like, uh, like as an overall of tonight. Testicle festival. Is that the new? Uh... <laughs> oh, you hear? It was. It was. It was a much better show overall. I was much happier with what we got tonight compared to weeks past. Only real disappointment, unfortunately, is is the, the Nightmare again. Collective Women's Edition. You the know, women it's... again. <laughs> They can't that, get it right. They, they, they're. I don't even want to say they're trying because it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it's lacking just so strongly. It's stands out so far above everything else that's going on. Can anyone explain why Luther? They they literally said tonight that Luther was a dangerous. Uh, sp- he spread like chaos or something around yeah, Japan. Yeah, brought fear to the fans and, and oh, stalked no. people in Japan. Yeah, in New Japan he was scary and stalked people. But in America now at AEW, two women beat him up. Yeah, we, you know, two weeks in a row he's went ahead and, and, and just been toppled. Why would this <laughs> guy come in? Dismantled. He's like an idiot. He's like, like I think Bobby the Brain Heenan got in more offense on people. Like, and by the why? lightest shot ever this week. I mean, you got 95-pound Riho last week landing on top of you. And then this week, you get a uh, barely, you could even call it a bump from a kendo stick. So, I mean, like... She, she is impressive in the ring, too, you know, overall. But yeah, yeah. neither one of their opponents from the Nightmare Collective belong in a ring tonight. I, I'm sorry, what Brandy was, was, was piss poor, and her partner, with Melanie, was even worse. Dude, the, they, uh, they botched everything they got into tonight. That the, was a abysmal, painful thing to watch. The first fucking four or five moves in that match was, was a botch. And it was so dreadful, the crowd just went dead silent. They weren't silent yeah, they, from they the beginning. Yeah, they lost that crowd entirely. In a second, they were like, are they, are, these, are they wrestling phantoms in the ring? What is this? It certainly felt that way. That was the worst thing of the night. But yeah, it got better, but it was... Jesus. But that that's, you know, pretty much the only main complaint of the night. All in all, they made a lot of smart booking decisions. They they built up certain feuds and angles. I mean, now we've got new number one contenders for the tag team titles. And obviously, to me anyways, it seems like that's when we'll see Hangman Page turn on Kenny Omega. I feel right. like that's when we're getting that, that turn to happen. They're going to go for the tag titles and have that tried and true story be told, but... That was a, a really intense, worthwhile opening that had a lot of fun moments to it. And you, 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 they they didn't do the usual style where, you know, best friends face to force off, uh, you know, have to be, be pure enemies. You saw the Young Bucks still work with Kenny. So the elite worked together. But the better man kind of got, you know, his due in the end. So I appreciated the fact that, like, oh, they're still working as a unit, even though they're trying to, you know, every man for himself in that scenario. I like that there was an upset, essentially, between uh, the group, a little bit of animosity created there. So that was interesting. Uh, Cody had a great promo. You know, there, there was just a lot of a lot of decent and, and some stellar moments tonight. So, yeah, the uh, the opening match was fun, I guess, fun chaos. I thought it was a little too long, but that's just me. Everybody seemed I, I, to like it. I thought it. it was just long enough. Had it gone any longer, then I think it, it would have overstayed its welcome. But they also didn't, then I noticed, cut to any commercial breaks for the beginning. So that, that kind of made it feel a little bit longer because there was no breaks. Yeah. That opening was just 17 minutes straight, you know, for the match itself. I really, uh, I, I got to... Um 
I got to tell you, man, I, I did a podcast earlier with Tommy, so I just want to get the plug out there really quickly. Uh, part one of me and Tommy's podcast, Honestly Podcast, is up right now on Patreon. It is fucking great. Like, if you, you have to listen to this. episode, Part one of episode 12 is up right now on Patreon with me and Tommy. Tommy went into some things that were really interesting. And then part two is fucking hilarious. And part two is going up uh, a little bit later or in the weekend or something like that. So make sure on Patreon you check it out. Um, in the Honestly podcast is up part one. Uh, it's about an hour long. Part one, part two is about 45 minutes, and that's coming later. Um, it's up on Patreon right now. And if you didn't hear it, my Morning Madness episode 200 is a spicy one, a fun one, and an honest one that is uh, pretty cool, man. It's been I've been really enjoying the feedback from people. So if you guys want to hear my solo podcast from Morning Madness episode 200, and uh, me and Tommy's part one and part two of Honestly, episode 12. That is up. Check that out on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Um, also, rest in peace, Rocky Johnson. I made a video earlier about that, obviously, real quick. And this was, I had no idea there was this was coming. Uh, I don't, didn't know he was sick or if he was, or this probably was sudden. I don't even know yet. But uh, either way, I mean, crazy. But we got to attribute to him at the beginning of NXT tonight with a uh, 10 bell toll salute but we also got attributed at the beginning a little bit of uh, aw and uh yeah man the guy was when you watch rocky johnson move around in the ring you see how the rock you know really got his style so if you're somebody who didn't get to see rocky johnson just everything he did it just felt so powerful and big and real and it's something that uh you know you don't you don't see any of the wrestlers anymore uh, almost ever you you know i go back to rocky johnson you go back to ted dibiase you go back to, you know, Brett the Hitman Hart. I mean, you go back to all kinds of different guys. And the punches, the way they threw them, the way they moved in the ring, it just felt so believable, like powerful. And they really sold and made things exciting um, without having to do seven flips through the air on top of the top rope or something. So, yeah, rest in peace to Rocky Johnson. And that is a so, so surprised today to find this out. But um, yeah, huge shock, and I appreciate that both shows paid tribute to you know him in the opening. So yeah, it was really cool that they they both jumped in there. Um, we got to pour a beer in the chat right now for Eric Dotson. Dotson, we've got Dotson here. Uh, Eric Dotson, um, thank you so much, man, becoming a subscriber. Um, much appreciated uh, to Eric Dotson. We always are a big fan of Eric. Oh no, look out! Wait a minute, Soundwave. Soundwave's coming in with one. My name is Ryback. Cryback. Give me some more money. My name's Ryback. I want that money, money, money. My name is fucking Ryback. Give me some more money. Money is my crack. My name's Ryback. Ryback. I will finish on your face. What the fuck? Oh, I don't know why, but it blanked out his message. A rest in peace to Rocky Johnson. Great show. Eight out of ten. Loved the beginning, but women's match was a botch fest, and Luther must have kryptonite against uh, <laughs> Joseph uh, since he has been buried by two of them now. And I felt like... <laughs> against Asians. <laughs> and I felt like the show ended perfectly setting up Mox versus Pac. So great. Or Pac. The Soundwave 92, man. Thank you for the bomb. Fucking bombs what away from the Soundwave oh, 92. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's it. Bubbly. Oh, shit, man. The, the goal is... Oh, oh a little bit of up. the bubbly. That's it. That's why the fuck is... Uh, why is it blanking out? The oh, I know why. Because uh, the fucking... From like two years ago. When people were fucking attacking somebody. Mike, yep, I yeah, just thought about that. I was like, why is that doing that? <laughs> Mike Amelto, thank you for the $3, Mike Amelto. What's up, brother? Mike Amelto in the house. I got to fix that. I don't know how to, I don't know if I can. Um, but yeah, man, I, I really appreciate that, Mike Amelto. And rest in peace to uh, Rocky Johnson. I'll read that in a second once I fix this. Um, dude, we already hit the fucking goal. Almost. Crazy already. Almost. Got to get them taxes paid, man, before the fucking IRS comes and gets me. Thank you for that. 
I mean, I don't know what I don't know what they do. I've, I've, I've got to call the place tomorrow and find out. Like, do I take out a loan and then pay them off and then pay a loan company, or do I or do I just add on to my bill? I don't even know. So much appreciated. Thank you so much. And uh, come and get me, Uncle Sam, you cocksucker. Uh, we got um, just about everything. I think fixed here. Almost, I'm almost. I've almost fixed it here. It's Mike Yamilto said Moxley better show up next week to Jericho's cruise on a jet ski and some shit with an eye patch on. Oh. Notice how they kind of set it up with Jericho's attack on uh, Moxley's eye. That would be so epic. Seven point five out of ten tonight. Rest in peace, Rocky Johnson. Best drop kick in the biz. Yeah. So no doubt about that. Yeah, man, his drop kick. It was like he would rock he, people with these shots, and then he was able jump to get up. like perfect vertical. It, it, completely insane <laughs> for his size too. Like he would. Yeah, he, he, he was rock jacked. Him. He hit him with these punches. It looked like the guy was gonna fall down, and then he would back off and then drop kick him, and they just go fucking flying. Massive, unbelievable. That was great shit. That's good shit. It was really good shit, Vince. You would you loved it, Vince. I'm still trying to fix this. My bad. Still working on it. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. No. No worries. I mean, I, I, all in all, uh, you know, I, I, I liked what they did with DDP tonight. That was, you know, a, a welcome change, where they didn't have everyone just completely job out to the legend. They they used him properly. He looked great for his age. I felt. I like that they had Moxley show up in the Ford GT. That was a cool idea. So I, I appreciate that they kind of, you know, kept some continuity in the story that they were trying to tell. And, you know, Moxley wants to taunt Jericho even more. Justin Roberts gave one hell of an introduction to Moxley. Yeah, he almost I thought died. he was going to have an aneurysm tonight. Usually he gets really, you know, John, but tonight. He, yeah. <laughs> tonight. Like I'd I'm never surprised heard his that. balls didn't burst out of his asshole. I mean, he, Justin, he dude, belted it out. Do you want to lose your voice? I mean, this is not WrestleMania. Like he, this guy, this fucker thinks it's fucking WrestleMania. Well, he wanted to make it exciting, so I got to give him that much. And especially because they didn't hit Moxley's music, but I thought it was kind of a cool way to do it because he had the car. So I don't know if that was an intended botch, or, you know, unintentional botch, or intended because the, you know he had the special entrance, but. Mm. I liked it with no music and coming right, you know, driving in, come through the crowd. And then you still got the, uh, you know, the, the hell of an introduction from Roberts. So there's a Part massive of me introduction, a massive that, introduction by Roberts. Oh, huge. It's I, a I was, massive, I put, Jake. I put, I put Don't undersell it. Twitter. Don't undersell that introduction. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he, amazing that he didn't have an aneurysm yet at this point. I literally said he gave everything he had with that. <laughs> I mean, dude, I, I don't think I could do that. He turned into a force ghost. Now. I don't think you I know, could do that. Done. I don't think I could do that here. Like, I'd have to be in an arena in order to get that hyped up to do that, I feel like. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you'd have to really be getting going. But the fact that he, he, you know, dragged it on like that was, I always liked that. You know, when he used to do the Undertaker's introduction, and I know people didn't care for it. I don't like it, but I... but I've I, always I've always enjoyed his But I, I kind of like it now. It's weird. I didn't like it then, and but now I think it's, like, become a meme in my head, so it's funny. So, like, I, I like it now. But you know what I really love is what Drew said earlier. Guys, listen up in the chat. Drew, <laughs> earlier today with a very serious news report, listen to this. Testicle Festival. Testicle Hi, Festival. it's me, Drew, reporting about the Testicle Festival. Listen. Testicle Festival. Real quick, Jake, listen to this, right? Poor Jake has to listen to the stream. Testicle Festival. This is Drew earlier. He's reporting. Testicle Festival. You hear that? I'll clean up my system there. Yummy. Why do the donations play? What the fuck? Yummy. What the fuck? I had them fucking run. What the fuck? Eh, you getting a second show is quite a surprise. I didn't think TNT would give it to them so soon, but I guess they are happy with the show getting above 500k viewers. Mm. The second show apparently will not be AU Dark that will still be streamed on GayTube LOL. Wow. I did not know that. I did not know that. I am, uh... Very surprised that that's uh, the situation. Um, the Soundwave 92, man. Soundwave 92, thank you so much, brother. I just crashed my, my application here. I'm trying to fix it. Soundwave 92, thanks, bro. I have no idea why the fucking stream, uh, why the fucking thing did that, but... I'm a fucking idiot. 
Let me hear some more of this. Uh, sound wave. I'm gonna read that in a minute. There it goes. There we go. Testicle festival. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Testicle festival. Ooh. Oh, I can't come. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I can't come. Ooh. Testicle festival. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. I'm a fucking idiot. Testicle festival. Testicle festival. We're going to the testicle festival. We're going to the testicle festival. We're going to the testicle festival. Testicle festival. Oh. Testicle festival. Testicle festival. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. We're going to the oh, testicle festival. We go into the testicle festival. We go to the testicle festival. Testicle festival. Ooh. Oh, I can't come. Ooh. Uh, thank you, Drew. Thank you very much. Thank you, Drew. Thank you very much, Drew. Appreciate that. Testicle festival. All right, I think I figured out the problem with the uh, donos. Uh, Jake, can you hear me again? The testicle festival. I'm <laughs> weird. Give me some more time with that one. I'll work on it. Going through the, the testicle, testicle festival. festival. I'm just rocking out to Smoke the it up. massive delay on what stream. Have you, <laughs> what have you got to show in your it's fucking funny, you know, DMs? Smoke. I'll hear fire you know, a minute later. The stream tonight is, is severely delayed. My God. Oh, is it really behind? Yeah. Yeah, it's like 50 seconds, I think. Oh, I hate when... The, well, I can fix that in a way, but... No, no. I mean, I'm just saying, usually it's, it's not as far out, but yeah, I... Um, I was saying, I, I, you know, I love the entrance, and I had almost wished that Sammy had won that match. Honestly, there was a part of me that wants to see, I don't want to see Guevara turn on Jericho yet, but I would have liked to have seen what they did, um, you know. But that just gives us something else to look forward to going, you know, down the road a bit. It's, so it's not a wasted moment. It's just, you know, in passing, I was like, oh, that would have been cool, but doesn't mean it's ruined. It, 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 it can still happen. It, it probably will happen at some point. And Sammy Guevara did look like a Spanish god tonight against Moxley. They had one hell of a match. They really you know, did have a good match, yeah. Moxley had the upper hand for, for quite a bit, and it just took Guevara to get that one perfect execution, you know, the stomp from the top ropes or double knees, whatever it was. And from there, it just it shifted into his favor. And he was able to get the better of Moxley for, for quite a while. And then you had Moxley win by submission, you know, a rear naked choke. That's, that's you know, pretty unheard of. You usually just see the paradigm shift. For him to tap out and tap out immediately, he looked actually, like, scared. It was great. I was like, damn, that is that is perfect. So I was thoroughly impressed that we got some, some different moves, different finishers, different angles, you know, a, a, a pretty compelling story. Jericho's lights out moment could have could have dealt without. I did hate you when the say lights you wanted, go out. Did you say you wanted Moxley to beat Guevara or you wanted? Guevara? I said it would have been it would have been cool to see what happens with the story of of uh, Guevara and Jericho, you know, being pitted against each other. But that's something we'll get down the line. Oh, I got yeah. But if he yeah. beat Moxley, I'm not. Then that would I, you be know, cool. I, I just. Obviously, you need Moxley to win here. It's just, it, you know, something I thought of, you know, mid match. I'm like, oh, that would have been interesting to see what where they go with that. You know, the, someone from the inner circle gets the number one contendership, and now they have to deal with with that side of things. Would he make, you know, would Jericho make Sammy not compete and be like, oh, you know, you owe me that kind of thing? So, bang, Jake. I, I wish bang. they didn't do the lights out though, or at least the way they did it last so long. They it, did it, it again. It feels, they did yeah, the fucking lights silly, out especially again. Especially when you play the music. And then you do the lights out. Why are they doing so many of these? Stop it. They're obsessed with, you know, the ECW ways of old, apparently. So they're like, and, and the one thing I will say is that when WWE does the lights out, they're, they're pretty well timed with this. It just goes on and goes on and you're waiting and you're, and then, you know, you, you got to wait for everybody to get to the ring. I get it. But it seems with WWE, everybody is already in position or under the ring waiting or, you know, trap WWE, door. WWE has it down. Yeah, you know, and unfortunately, I, they have a while to go with this. So. I'd be, I mean, I'd be willing to bet in WWE that there's like a there's a guy under the ring, like go now, here's the time, like, and, and they're relaying everything the right well, way. That's also why they have the monitor under the ring. That's what people always right. wondered. Why is there a TV under there? I don't they're know. Watching the broadcast. So. Even if AEW is doing that, I, I would highly doubt there's any kind of direction under the ring. 
you know, and I don't. Yeah. So I mean, the, the, a lot the, of times, a TV the and Undertaker is a, a, a rarity, but for people like Bray Wyatt or other people that are supposed to pop out, even Kane at times, what they'll do is when they go dark before the match, they'll have so and so dressed up like ring crew or camera guy, and then when the, you know everyone's focused on the entrance, they'll just roll under the ring. So this way, they're not under there for an hour and a half waiting. So. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, it's it's pretty cool. But there's headphones too. I mean, like they throw headphones yeah, yeah. on, they can listen to the back and watch the TV. It's like they have all these directions. It's just like he hasn't figured it out yet. But they they've done it a lot. I mean, so if you do it like 50 times, you know, you're going to maybe screw up a couple of times. I mean, because WWE does it once in a blue moon. AEW has now shown it to you nine times, and this is the first time they've ever done it. So it's not bad, really, for the first time uh, to be doing it like this. But I will say that wow, like I mean, dude. I mean, lights out is like every week on AEW. It's very yeah. bizarre. And, and typically, when you see somebody getting their ass kicked, you're just you're always waiting for the reinforcements to come. You're waiting for backup to arrive. And I like the way that Moxley is is solo. He's alone. He has no one. Even people that have a common interest in hating the inner circle aren't supporting Moxley. He's burned that many bridges. And and I like that that was so emphatically stated tonight. He's by himself. The numbers game will always be a problem for him unless he starts opening up and making some allies. So, Well, let's go ahead and uh, hear from you guys on the donations. It looks like it's a hot night tonight. What's up to the chat? How are you fuckers feeling in the chat right now about AEW tonight? What do you think about AEW in the chat? Out of 10, let me see it. First couple, I'm reading them. I want to see what you guys are saying. I thought tonight was a, m a much better show, a great bounce-back show for AEW compared to the last couple weeks. Last week was one of the worst shows. Um, I spoke with other people who uh, other people who thought last week was the worst show too. Even even JD, you know, who's you know AEW rider like like I can be a little bit, and he didn't like it either. He thought it was horrible. So I mean, just so many people thought it was bad last week that I was like, thank God, because I thought that was one of the worst shows. But um, I thought tonight was good. I thought tonight was pretty good. Like it was much better than the past weeks. Uh, but there we go. Uh, Rio McLovin going three out of ten. Paul DC Derek giving it a four. Paul giving it a seven. A lot of other people giving it sevens and eights and sixes and sevens and eights. Got Trent Duke and Toxic Death and Soundwave and Suck It Trudeau. That's a hilarious name. Hazard his beard is here, baby, but he's just hard out of ten. DC Derek with the four. Wow, low scores, but a lot of people giving it a decent score. Six, seven, or eight seems to be rational to me. To me, yeah. a six, seven, or eight is justifiable. I don't know if I'd go eight. Uh, maybe because I was I was pretty disheartened the past few weeks with what they've given us. Yeah, it's it's been a, a pretty shit show for the most part. And tonight, uh, you know, I was talking with Gorilla Strong before, and he was he was right. MJF was booked perfectly. He said in his opinion, I agree. They used each person wisely, and they all looked better afterwards. Mm. And uh, really quick too, Sandman Sizzle in the chat had said uh, the lights out should only be for those who fit the gimmick. Right. You know the dark order and. Exactly. That that's when it happens with Jericho. It just you're really stripping down the other yeah. people's gimmick or mystique if they had a perfect perfect line there with mystique. You know, you're taking away the atmospheric uh, intensity that comes along with the lights going out. So the lights went out when I was there in Boston. Cody ran out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like if they're, they're they go out every <laughs> fucking week. Hey, I mean, can, I, I'm imagining them sitting in the back and being like. We'll, we'll do. We'll turn the lights out, and then we'll come on. It's like that's just like a thing. I mean, I guess maybe we need to get used to this. Maybe this is just like, oh, let's do the lights out. Like it's like that's a thing that they always do. It's almost like being like, oh my god, they used a steel chair again this week. Yeah. Like at this point, you don't say that. You're just used to like, oh, there's always You're a just steel used chair. To it. So this is this is their like just lights out happen all the time. I guess their commonality. Yeah, they're they're easy go to. Maybe because I just I recall. You know, watching ECW three in the morning, and the lights would go out, and Sandman would come out. Then the lights would go out, and then Taz would be in the ring. Then the lights would go out, and then it, you know Tommy was in the ring, and then, you know the lights would go out again. It would happen like three, four times in a row, and it, you'd be like, "Well, it's weird. Right. I don't remember them going out that much in ECW. I don't know why. I don't remember it. I, but I mean, uh, I, I mean, I remember. I, I can find out, clip but... after clip right now. I guarantee in, in thirty seconds on YouTube. Of yeah. <laughs> lights out compilation. I do remember it going out a lot, uh, quite a bit, but I, I guess I just don't remember. Ever a time where it was like, God, every week, maybe. I mean, but ECW was weird because I would never, I'd see like two episodes, then I'd miss four weeks, get a tape, and watch the tape. You know, it's like it would be all over the place. So maybe that's why I'm not getting it. But let me uh, go back to the donations real quick. What are you guys saying tonight? Right now, it looks like Soundwave 92 
is going to take home the JCS Digital Championship around his scrawny-ass waist of Soundwave 92. Super Chat Party. Super Chat Party from John Montgomery. Hit me with that Drew Drop. NXT. Hit me with that motherfucking Drew Drop. Here's the Drew Drop, John Montgomery. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Testicle Festival. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. I'm a fucking idiot. What have you got to show in your fucking DMs? Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. <laughs> uh, John Montgomery, thank you for the super chat party. He's going with a 7.3 for NXT. 7.3. Jesus Christ. Make it a 7.5, John Montgomery. God, what do you want my head to explode? You want my fucking head to explode? No, John, thanks, man. Appreciate that, bro. And I see that maybe these other ones got skipped or something maybe so i'm gonna make sure we get those played i don't know why they skipped it had something to do with me having to pause the donations after the crash earlier Super Chat Party. john montgomery coming in again au was a really boring tonight aew um was really boring tonight 5.2 what the fuck really did you see last week what did you give last week's show? Because last week's show was a piece of shit. But I did give last week a horrible rating. I gave, I think I gave last week a five, or five yeah, five. Yeah, it was, it was low. But to say that this week was boring, I don't see how it was boring. They had something for everyone. I feel like tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I could see if you thought tonight was like run of the mill. I could see that. <laughs> I could see like, oh yeah, it was like six or seven out of ten. I could see that. But I mean, compared to last week, I mean, last week was so was horrible. Yeah, like I said, the really only slow standstill was was the women's segment. Pack and um, super well, Darby Allen. Allen. Darby Party. Allen. Yeah, they, they, I thought they were great. Yeah, in a circle is just a DPs. circle. Jerk unsupervised. Uh, it, you know, yeah. segment was was handled well. I thought it was all right. It was an okay show. I mean, I'm not comparing it to NXT yet because I haven't seen NXT in full. You know what I mean? But um, I yeah, NXT had some some big stuff going on on their side. Worlds Collide is going to be one of the greatest NXT shows. Jesus, I think ever. I hope so because like you've, they've you've had got some damn good shows. I mean, to top any DIY else. taking on Bait and Seven. I mean, that's that's huge right there. Take my fucking money. Uh, Undisputed Era and Imperium. Then we got Rhea Ripley and I'll Tony take, Storm, I'll take like virginity. six at that point. There, there's so much going on on that card. Yeah, I don't know. Can't say what the R word in the chat. Oh, What's the R a word? A little bit Ray? of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. What's oh, the R word? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Moxley better show up next week to Jericho's cruise on a jet ski or some shit with an eye patch on. Yes. Notice how they kind of set it up with Jericho's attack on Mosley's eye. Yep. That would be so epic. Tonight, R.I.P. Rocky Johnson. Best dropkick in the biz. Mike Amoto, all I can tell you guys is I reached out to Joey Janela and I sent Joey Janela the clip of me ranting about Moxley chasing the boat on a fucking high speed boat. I sent that to fucking Joey Janela in the DMs a week ago. So let's see if they do it. He is the perfect Canadian, Sean Schlong Spears. Let's go. I enjoyed the show tonight. Drunk Hangman Page is the best hangman. Nightmare Collective isn't working, Brandy isn't a good fit, and Luther is a pussy. Darby is great, but he'll be crippled by 35. I would also yeah. like to take Shido out for sushi and sex. Yeah, dude, she's hot. She looks like the fucking Mulan chick, kind of. She looked like goddamn Mulan coming out there. I'm probably fucking creating some kind of like racial horrible thing, but... Whatever. Uh, thank you for the donation, man. Appreciate the ten dollars. Uh, hazardous beard. There's something going oh on no! Up in space. There's something going <laughs> on up in this place. There's something weird gotta happen and strange gotta happen and things are kinda happening. What the fuck is happening? Aliens, extraterrestrials. They gave me a shot. Nanotechnology. Ah, ah, I'm not me. Ah, ah. 
Send your hey soul. yo, was pretty decent tonight. Like what's going on with Moxley and Jericho. NXT was pretty damn good. That triple with Scott Rush and Breeze was awesome. The time splitters and grizzled young veterans was fun, and a few surprises in the women's battle royal. Uh yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you pretty much on all that for the most part. Uh, decent show. The women really failed, but uh, shout out to the girls with the fifty-one dollar Area Fifty-One donation. It is fucking Area 51 time, baby. Shout out to the Girdles. That is, they're going to take the top spot. Unbelievable. Uh, shout out to the Girdles. They just robbed Soundwave. Yeah, they did. Shout out to the Girdles. <laughs> now the alien donation played. We're going to have a theater camp episode on us. <laughs> we went ahead and... Uh, you know, I'm I'm I didn't get to see all of NXT, but I'm I'm looking through most of what I'm trying to catch up with, and it seems like you know just full steam ahead, obviously for the next takeover in Portland. But they're also Shout building nice little worlds collide, so I, I I cannot wait for that show the night before the Rumble. Yeah, it's gonna be big. It, seems like it's gonna be, it just seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm so. hyped for this. Like you know what, I'm really hyped. Uh, I'm hyped to watch last week's episode of NXT because I I, wa- I rewatch it, but I was distracted with something. So yeah. I'm going to rewatch last week's watch tonight's and then like going into that. I mean, I'm excited, man. I mean, and then this is all taking place the night of the rumble, the same as normal, right? Saturday night and then Sunday. Yep. Not this week though. The rumble is not this week. It's the week after this week. Yeah. The week after we got and, um, uh, the McConnor, the McGregor fight coming up this Saturday, this night. Saturday night. Yeah. I wanted to, you know, I was, family members were like, Oh, we'll throw in money and you know, we'll pick it up. In order to, if you don't have ESPN Plus already, the only way you can get it, you can't just buy an ESPN Plus subscription. You have to buy the pay per view yep. and ESPN Plus. Yeah, if you buy ESPN Plus, you just basically get a discount on all pay per views. Yeah, so I but have, you have to buy a year subscription for ESPN Plus in order to buy the pay per view. What? Yeah, they made it a combo package. Okay, so what? I mean, that sucks, but all I know is I got, so I got half off on ESPN. And it's monthly. And so it's like... Listen. Yeah, you can usually do it for a monthly charge of whatever, five ninety nine something like that. But for right now, the only way you can do it is for a year. Ooh. I went on the website, and you have to buy the NXT, or, geez, NXT, the UFC pay-per-view but that's, well, with a year subscription. Because a year is like $40 of times Yeah, it's 12. like 45 plus whatever the pay-per-view is. It ends up being like oh, $90. Oh, I thought it was 40 bucks a month. Uh, maybe it is something like that. No, I thought it was for the pay-per-view and the year subscription, though. So, so are you tell well, like if it's only- you can't just get a one. They don't want people getting one month and I, then. I thought it was a hundred bucks for ESPN. It's, it's five dollars a month. Okay, there you go. Okay, all right. So that's fine then. That's cool. That's totally. So fine. It ends up being sixty a year plus the pay-per-view, but there's there's no way to get like you can't buy it just for one month to get the. UFC pay-per-view. You know, they don't want people to sign up for one month. So right now you have to get the ESPN Plus annual plan to get UFC 246. It gives you a 25% discount, quote-unquote, on the annual plan, but still, you can't just buy the pay-per-view. So they want you to, you know, they want to make sure they have you for a year with this. Which is, you know, bullshit in its own right, but I get what they're doing. They want to get as many subscribers as they can. Yeah, it says right here, for new subscribers only, your subscription will renew on an annual basis at the annual subscription price, currently forty nine ninety nine plus tax. Damn. So you have to you have to get that and then the pay per view, you know, so it ends up being eighty four ninety eight plus whatever. That's crazy. Yeah. But it's not that bad. I mean in a way, like Essentially, if you buy every pay per view, it's a great deal. If you buy almost every pay per view, it's a great deal because you get like twenty, like twenty bucks off, I think, or ten bucks off, yeah, at least. something like that. Yeah, it's it's it, it says save over twenty five percent. So so that's you know you you save fifteen bucks every pay per view, and so if there's like what twelve a year or something like that. Yeah, usually one a month. 
Yeah, so I mean, you know, at five times twelve is whatever sixty something, seventy something. See, I don't know if you can get this one just through TV providers though, because I was looking through. I mean, maybe it's just mine with Frontier. Comcast might be different, but Frontier wasn't offering it. And I mean, maybe you can do it directly through pay per view, but I I know they wanted to make this an ESPN Plus exclusive, so. No, well, I don't give a fuck anyway. Fuck, a, fuck uh, it. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I, <laughs> like, I'm not. Don't quote me exactly, but I'm looking at the site here. That's that's what I was looking into. It just seems like they're they're trying to get as many people to subscribe to the plus model as possible. Well, take us back to AEW because fuck ESPN. Uh, fuck yeah. It. So we went ahead and you know we we got the major four way tag match at the beginning for the number one contendership to face SCU next week on the Jarrett Cruise. So Best Friends took on Hangman Page and Omega versus Santana and Ortiz versus the Young Bucks. And again, some some you know great action here. We got the, the three amigos suplex on Matt Jackson at one point. Hell of a spear um, that, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that Matt broke up. And I was like, damn, that just, you know, looked like it, it cut him in half. And uh, then we had a really cool moment where, like, there was multiple suplexes, and then everybody goes ahead and, and, and tries to suplex each other. And that's when you get the freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy moment. <laughs> freshly squeezed. He looks like a he looks like a fucking AIDS patient. He looks smaller lately. I've I've said that as well. But like, Orange Cassidy needs to have a match. He's starting to look like a fucking like the Crypt Keeper. He's got a few independent dates solo coming up. So. I saw them advertised on Twitter, but uh, I like how people on Twitter was was basically putting up like rugby scores behind the guys. They said it looks like a big skirmish. <laughs> That's a hell of a meme. So, um, you know, and, and you you saw the 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 big suplex from all of that, and obviously the the ending, just like last week where we got the Hurricane Rana into the cutter. This week we saw Mega and Page hit a V trigger buckshot lariat combo. Like they executed that perfectly. They both connected at the same time, and I was like, "Damn, that that was just super impressive." Not just you know, sim, you know, simply by the timing of it, but the way it looked too. They delivered that excellent. So pretty emphatic win for those two. They're now the number one contenders. It pissed off the Young Bucks in the process, so maybe there'll be uh, some dissension between Kenny and, and the Elite. We'll see what happens there. But, you know, it was a good story told, and it was, you know, pretty entertaining overall. Really, really good way to start the show. Plus, no commercial interruptions, so you got like a solid 20-minute block to start the show white hot. Can't argue with that. Right off the bat, that's a, yeah, that's that was a solid, a, it was, you know, 7.5. It was a good start. The crowd was hyped up. It was definitely justified. You were like, all right, they got the crowd working. They got the crowd going. And then the women came out, and it was... Well, no, next we had Cody coming out. Dead with, zone. Uh, oh, yeah, well, He, he gave Cody, his, yeah. his promo, and it, he did a good job himself, but... Thank God it, there was they, no Arnie They just Anderson. displayed the graphic on screen of what the stipulations that MJF wanted. Yeah. And it would have been better if they just, like, quickly recapped what he said versus just throwing it on screen it was just such an anticlimactic way to be like here's unveiling what he wants me to go through then cody explained it and him explaining like oh the lashings that he has to take made it sound even less like legitimate in a way like it, it, i know he was trying to play it up but i'm not crazy about that stipulation it, it just sounds ridiculous in a sense i like him being put through a match i like the the no contact stipulation as well the lashing thing just sounds odd to me but <laughs> it was bizarre but it, it, it feels very misplaced and thank this. god cody's white yeah granted so that that saved them there you know that, that would have been uh <laughs> i mean just brutal to weird. fight on social media yeah i'm surprised that they're not all whining about that even even being done to him like just like oh you know that's just like uh, you know, i'm just surprised with everybody um fuck all yeah, we're this gonna name is you know kunta kinte thing going on with cody and yeah did they uh did, <laughs> did, the funniest thing today though of all the news has to be uh impact wrestling getting banned on twitch I, you know, and like you said, they broke terms of service, and but there's so many female streamers that do this regularly. Yep, yep. That don't get banned. The one girl, oh, I thought my camera was off, and her top's off. Who has to take off their bra as soon as they end the stream? 
Yeah. Not complaining, just just a curious question. Like, oh, that was a good stream. I need to sit here and chat topless for the next five minutes. Oh, I didn't realize my camera was still on. And this girl didn't originally get banned till there was an outcry. Then she got 72 hours, and it was relinquished in 24 hours. I, uh, I, I feel bad for Impact because it's it's not actual porno. It's it They blurred it out. You know, I, I know they're trying to be risque with all of this, but come on. You know, Twitch is, is just such a, a an odd duck in all of this. They're they're very uh, lenient towards some of the females and, and pro thoughtery, it feels I mean, like. And then I other s- times, it's, it's so just outlandish. By the way, what RV did with those chicks, that porno thing in the bed, it's so fucking weird, but it is awesome. Like, it's awesomely terrible. It's, it's captivatingly terrible. strange because he feels <laughs> very gritty and grimy. Yeah. You feel, like, dirty watching it. But then again, it's hilarious. <laughs> it, it's absolutely hilarious in, in the is. way they're interacting with each other. And he's like, oh, I'm getting the best of both worlds. This is, you know, well, <laughs> it's quite, okay dude, to celebrate. And- RVD is not usually a good promo. That might have been, I'm not joking about this when I say this, that might have been RVD's like top three promo of all time. Like that might be the funniest thing and the best thing I've ever seen RVD do, maybe since like ECW or something. Because his stuff is normally terrible. He's usually like, hey, man, whatever, I'm RVD, like, and we're going to go out and we're, well, that, that's all he ever does. But, like, this was so weird. If you did not see this, I am 100% like telling you to watch this. Watch it once, and then if you need to, watch it a second time. Because it's so fucking hilarious. They, did they, didn't they put it up on Pornhub or something, the rest of it? Or something like that? I don't know. I didn't hear about that, but uh, I don't know. But either way, he got funny. I mean, dude, men have been fucking banned from Twitch for having their shirts off on Twitch. Yeah, guys, guys just you know sitting in their apartment with their shirts off. Yeah, get themselves not not just like temporarily banned, but permanently permanently banned. Yeah. So I mean, these chicks had giant, massive porno tits, and and one of them had their nipples out so much that when Impact uploaded it on their Twitter, they even blanked out the titty. But, yeah, they blurred it out. And... But they missed the titty on Twitch, and so they got banned on Twitch. Funny enough, right before they got banned on Twitch, Onision got banned on Twitch. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't hear that today. The bands <laughs> are coming down on Twitch. They're, the band hammer's swinging. Chris Hansen's a weird fuck, though. I was in his chat earlier, and he's... What a weird group of people there. They got they they timed me out for saying millennials are crybabies. But then, then, <laughs> yeah, they're very... Uh... It, it, I can't think of the word for it, like uh, uh, safe space ish in their chats. Yeah, but then the people it's, were it's like, like a, uh, uh, like not cry circle, but but I can't remember the, the the term that I'm looking for here. It'll hit me eventually. But yeah, no, no, it was just weird. That, like, like an eco chamber, like they 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 constantly promote themselves and 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 make sure that the that, you know that, oh you're doing a great job and, and and make sure you get those pedophiles. Like I I get it, but it's just. Well, they were like, I hope someone goes in and like beats up and kills Onision. And then it was like, but I, all I said was, man, millennials are crybabies in this chat. Some people in the chat. Because they were like, oh, you're saying Kai's name wrong. She's a gr- guy now or whatever. And I was like, she's a psycho. But uh, and they were like, they banned me for saying she's a psycho. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you can't fuck? say she. It's he now. Yeah. And that was strictly attention based anyways. They, I guess he thought it would get him off the hook with all of this drama, yeah. you know, well, oh, you're not going to go after the trans individual. So. Well, I do want to tell you guys, if you guys want to hear more about that and have hear all our conversations about what's going on over there and some other crazy things, make sure you guys subscribe to my other channel. I cover all this other shit on my other channel, Corrupted Nation. Make sure you go over and subscribe to it. We just over 11,000 uh, uh, subscribers on Corrupted Nation. So go over there and give that a sub for my non-wrestling shit. And uh, again, I can't say this to you guys enough. Real quick, this promo here, and we'll get back to AEW review. I want to know what you guys think about AEW. We get some more donations to play, and um, I want to. Uh, th- there's just a few more things here to, that I definitely need to talk about, and I see uh, you guys' donations coming in. But guys, Morning Madness episode 200, it's up right now. It's an hour and 16 minutes long. It's it's only me. It's my solo podcast, and it's episode 200. 200 baby started it in 2017 uh many things i started in 2012 and 13 and 14 this was started on patreon it is up now it's spicy 
I hope honest opinions on some things and situations. Um, it's up there. Become a patron. Check that out. But also um, today, I sat down with Tommy NC twenty ten for for honestly podcast episode twelve part one. It's forty two minutes long. Episode two is coming out later. That is um, also about 40 minutes long. Talk shows don't have just random dudes come off the street that they make um, fun of. We really went into a lot of things. I I loved this podcast. And when you get to listen to part one and part two back to back, I think this is a fucking awesome podcast with Tommy. And again, one more thing to plug was from a couple days ago on Saturday night, Sunday morning, obviously, Corrupted Podcast. Episode 134 is up as well. Two hours and 50 minutes. Download it on your phones and your devices so you can hear it. Save your mobile data plan and download it to your phone. Listen to it in the car, whatever. Hit play on Patreon. Either way, download the Patreon app. Download it from desktop, whatever you want to do. Either way, become a patron and check out Corrupted Podcast 134. Episodes 133 and episodes 134 are me, JB, D-Moon, and Leah, and they are literally... Like some of the better episodes in a long time. They're really funny. I enjoyed them. Listen to that shit. And you can support my show by doing that, by becoming a patron. You support my channel. But not only do you support the channel for five bucks a month or two bucks a month, or ten bucks a month, but also you get 30 hours of bonus content that you cannot hear anywhere else on Patreon. Uh, it has got to be one of the most fucking craziest Patreons out there for anybody. Uh, solo. So there you go. It's up on the screen. Make sure you check that out today to support what we do here, but also to get a whole shitload of shows that you don't get anywhere else. And also the $25 patrons, I'm going to get them up on the screen too. Um, they're in the producer level. So thank you to the producers on Patreon right here up on your screen. They'll be popping out throughout. Uh, Jake, what's next? AEW. Um, we, we, we glossed over it before, but I mean, AEW is, is, has every reason to celebrate today. The announcement from Warner Media is huge. I mean, the fact that they're going to be stable, you know, till 2023 is massive. No longer can people say that this is a, you know, a temporary run or uh, just a simple excursion or an experiment. They're they're officially covered here. Yeah, they now have deep pockets to sign other talent. You know, it, it, there's there's several reports. They saying AEW can open their pocketbooks to sign new stars with expanded Warner Media deal. It says now with this new deal, they absolutely will be profitable in 2020, and they'll be for years to come. Of how their pay per views appear to be doing in their budget. So looking at the analytics that we have provided so far, everything's going very well for them. And now it'll be double what they had, had been earning before in terms of the ad revenue split and covering costs. So with these new um, the, the new TV deals, they're going to be making more for ad revenue. They get more of the split and they have to cover less themselves. So now you don't have to worry about it falling just on Tony Khan to pay for the, the you know, in the company itself to, to pay for contracts. Now they're going to have extra media and, uh, you know, attention as well with this deal and another show. So they're obviously going to need to, to broaden their roster as well because you're not going to be able, you don't want to see this show two nights in a row. You're going to need more talent. And this gives them a huge chance to go ahead and broaden their roster and really spread their wings. So I think this is great. I'm curious what night the second show is going to be on, though. Are they going to go head-to-head with WWE on a, on a Monday or Friday? Or are they going to choose to go on Tuesdays or Thursdays? It kind of, you know, wait-to-be-seen type deal here. But I, I'm very, very curious what the outcome is going to be. What night do you think they'll they'll likely go for a second show? I mean, I'm assuming that if they do a second show, it's like sort of their backup show or their like little show. So it's I, it's said that they're going for an all out full second show from what I was reading with the press release I mean, and the junket and you look at you look at like Nitro and Thunder. Like Thunder was clearly the number two show. SmackDown usually was clearly seen as the number two show. Yeah. So what but I the, mean it's still a, a prevalent I mean you I would think stand out of the company. I, I would so. think that you'd want Dynamite to air first still. So I would think that your second show would air Friday. Yeah, Thursday or Friday. Please, God, no. You, you I, know what I mean? Yeah, like, please, yeah. God, no. But I think um, you're right. It seems like Thursday might be the day because I about, don't know if they're, they they want to go head-to-head with WWE's Raw or SmackDown. I, I don't think that's a good idea anyways. NXT was a small enough pool 
for them to to take a bite out of, but, but they're, they're gonna, still losing viewership to NXT. So, so you think, even if they have more viewers than NXT, there's still people that could be watching AEW that are watching NXT. So, I mean, could they do Friday? I mean, Thursday and then like back to back nights. I mean, they they could. could. I you know, I don't see why not. See, I, I would think that things would work out a lot better if they run if they ran Dynamite on Mondays. Like if they move Dynamite to Mondays. Or even Tuesdays and Thursdays. Or, yeah, that Tuesdays. One day in between. Yep, that could be okay, but I don't think they're going to want to move off the spot of Wednesday. So, and I yeah, you know, I mean, you'll have to see. You never the weekend, know. Weekend? Could they make it a weekend show? A weekend morning? Tuesday and show? Thursday would be great for them because of the way WWE is scheduled. That they would have essentially no competition. I Although, think that would be smarter for them to not go head to head with anyone and just try and take advantage of the entire market. And pull in, hey, wrestling fans, you love wrestling? Well, there's nothing on this night and this night, so come and enjoy wrestling all week long. You know, use that as a benefit. What about, uh, I mean, their pay-per-views are on Saturdays, so they're not going to do it on a Saturday night. Um, what about uh, like a morning show, like an 11 a.m. wrestling show again on the weekend? What about something like I, that? That's different. It is different, but I don't know how well that would do. Yeah. With TNT. TNT is, is all about prime time. Well, so. and, you know, Dark is on Tuesdays already, so... That, I, mean, I think, because that's on YouTube, that can be moved and fluctuated rather easily. Right, anytime. And the fans will still be there. Right. No problem, yeah. In fact, if I... Because that doesn't have to... This, this is, that's less of a let's watch that live what, kind of thing, you know, as I, where Dynamite has to be seen live, essentially. I'd put, up, I'd put Dark on an hour before Raw starts. Dead serious. That's a smart idea as well, and, and give them a you know their own lead in. But you know, wrestling fans are already ready to tune in to Raw, so you know, build up your audience by piggybacking ahead of time. Yeah, that's because smart then as well. because what will happen is you'll see people who are watching Raw, you know, saying things like, "Man, AEW's Dark was better than this," and like people will be like, "What's AEW Dark?" Exactly, and try and get them some extra added you know viewership that way. There, there's a lot of things that. I'm curious to see where they go from from here. So, all right. Well, let me run. Because the original plan, uh, it was going to be Tuesday Dynamite. Remember? Yeah. And then they decided to move it to Wednesdays when Aid uh, NXT announced they were going live. So, God, man, they I, they, they wanted that head to head, and they, I still think that was a terrible idea. Are these but. companies trying to kill me. I mean, like when we went back, dude. If you went, if you went back to 2016 or 17 and told me, or 15 or whatever, and you're like, yeah, there's going to be uh, a AEW like. I mean, what? I mean, yeah. I'm I'm down with this in a way because thank God that this is my, like, what I do now. This is what we do. Like, I talk about wrestling. I pay attention to wrestling. So there's so much of it. If it was only once a week, I mean, think of my life. You know what I mean? I'd be live on Monday Night Raw only, and then it'd be over, and then the rest of the week. Yeah, because I, mean, I missed SmackDown being on Tuesdays. Now it doesn't really get covered. It kind of gets missed yeah. because the Friday slot is is difficult to navigate. I mean, for me, unfortunately, that's the one downfall. The only night that Yeah, you sucks. have your big show going into. and Yeah, man, and I mean, just, it's that's the only thing that sucks for me is SmackDown gets a little left behind a little bit now, unfortunately. But, I mean, shit, I... I don't know. I just wish that mil I, I wish that one of these companies would find a way to generate new fans again, like to generate new fans. Like I really wish that all of a sudden a wrestler be could become popular and transcend the wrestling business into other things, and people would start watching wrestling again, and we'd have you know five million watching Raw and three million watching AEW. My numbers would blow up. Like it would help me. Like I want that to happen. I don't want yeah, these people. Yeah, I want to see a resurgence. Yeah, I mean, greedily, like selfishly, I want yeah. them to kick and especially ass. especially now because there's so many options for wrestling as well. You know, more than just New Japan and WWE and, you know, WCW. And, you know, now there's there's so much. All these independent federations all over the place, and, and they're all taking a small piece of the pie. And WWE is still obviously the figurehead of it all, but there's just so many options. It, it's, it's hard to fathom at times how many companies are, are running successfully you know they're operating at, not at a loss it's shocking but they're they're managing yeah they're doing it they're everybody is keeping afloat similar to like it's kind of like just you know how the record company sucks now but now everybody can kind of make it as an independent band or how i can make it here on youtube instead of being on the radio um lavandero uh yes i heard dude fucking i am pumped dude nine inch nails and depeche mode 
are going into the Hall of Fame. I'm going to jerk off. The rest of the fucking bill is horrible, I think. But Depeche Mode and Nine Inch Nails in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 100% had to happen. I don't yeah. know why Judas Priest isn't there yet, but uh, and a bunch of other people. But like, but you know what? That's awesome, dude. I'm awesome shit, man. I mean, fuck yeah. Nine Inch Nails and Depeche Mode are the shit. Those are like two of my favorite bands ever, so I'm pretty... That's that's a great announcement. Before we get what? back into uh, AEW as well, really quick, I, I tweeted it out before because I got an email from WWE, but they're having a D-Generation X reunion at Madison Square Garden. Ugh. So they're they're bringing in everybody but Billy Gunn, obviously. It's on the road to WrestleMania tour Billy on Gunn! March 22nd. So Time to lay the tarps! It says DX returns to the Garden for the first time in over a decade. You know, and they're, they're act, you know, pre-sale tickets are live and all this stuff. I, yay? <laughs> like, it, it, it feels desperate more than anything. I'm curious to see how fast tickets move with DX being added to the show, but... I know it'll draw in some people, but it just doesn't. And especially because we've seen DX quite a few times in the past year or so, it, it, it again doesn't feel like a huge draw as well. So it, you know what I'm, it feels I'm, like. I'm it, curious to see the numbers on that one. It, feel, it feels like Friday nights on my show on Monetize This, where I have to come up with weird little gimmicks to do because I don't have the Monetize This belt going yet. That's what it feels like. Like they're, like, yeah, they're desperate trying to for little come things. Come up with angles and yeah, I'm like, they're like oh. oh, the tickets aren't selling to MSG. So Hunter, what are you doing that Sunday? <laughs> That's exactly what it reminds me of, and, and and I'm open about that, man. I, I'm gonna do a few more gimmicky things. I'll monetize this, and then we're gonna get the belt back, and it's gonna be an epic show. But you Hell know, yeah. might as well come up with something. But yeah, this is them trying to push some tickets, and I mean, it's hilarious to me, but it's also makes sense. I mean, what you know, what the fuck, you got to do something. Well, speaking of making sense, our our fears have become reality because Cain Velasquez confirms today he's in the Royal Rumble as well. So, Ugh. I don't know if you heard that yet, but <clears throat> he said, I can win it. Hell yeah. He said, uh, I'm going to win this thing. I can win it. Uh, yo, Why would they not leave that as a surprise entrant? They, nobody's going to be surprised. It feels well, like. No, I know, but I mean, we we already knew essentially that he would be there. It was all but said and done. But why not just let him come out? Why announce this publicly? You really think he's going to add viewership overall? I'm telling you, I, I really think that they want to spoil all these guys so they come out and you knew about them coming and now they got to face Brock and he eliminates almost everybody until, like we said, the one surprise at the end comes out and takes out Brock or whatever. But anyway, we should I mean, get back to AEW. What surprise be? People are going <laughs> to kill us. <laughs> we we got to save something for out of nowhere tomorrow, right? Uh, dude, so much news dropped today. It was like, what Oh, I know. I, I have so much. So Why isn't this Thursday? I mean, exactly. we're gonna, we'll talk a lot more about a lot of this stuff. But uh, real quick, I just want to say uh, thank you to Clambaked for uh, returning on Patreon. What's up to Clambaked if he's listening? Uh, $5 a month. Thank you, sir. And the ghost of Tommy's barber <laughs> went from five dollars to ten dollars on Patreon. I assume he went to the ten dollars spot so we could hear Honestly Podcast. So thank you to everybody who upped their pledges to the VIP status for Honestly Podcast today. If you did up your pledge to ten dollars to become a VIP uh, and you give a shit about Discord, make sure you hit me up so I can make sure that you get the gold VIP on my Discord server. And uh, go in there and, and have some fun with the other Joe Cronin show and JCS Army psychopaths, and we'll have a good time. Let me go to the uh, donations again real quick. Super time to pay the bill. Party. Our word is Redskins. AU was boring. Oh, really? Flipperoo. That definitely shouldn't be banned in the chat. Uh, AW was boring. Flipperoo. I don't know, man. I guess I don't. I didn't find it boring tonight. I mean, I didn't. I didn't, like, love the shit out of it, but I thought it was good. I thought it was pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, it was a lot better than uh, whatever the fuck the other ones were. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe down below. Hit that like button. If you want to donate like John Montgomery just did, you can use Super Chat right down below there. Or if you want to uh, use Streamlabs and PayPal or credit card or whatever, uh, the description box down below, Twitch Alert, Streamlabs, the link is down in the description box. And all the donation amounts, there's like 50 of them, they're all listed in the description box down below all the way at the bottom. Just expand the description box so you can see everything. And you can drop it live if you'd like to do that. If not, Where am I oh living? my god! Where am I living? Oh my Where god! Where am I living? Right now! Next time I want to see 90 Tag Team Wrestling, it'll just chop my dick off. Singles <laughs> matches were solid.
DDP needs to stay out of the ring. D Cody is actually D now starting to annoy me. Ooh, DC Derek, uh, Cody Rhodes, it's finally coming down to it. He's starting to annoy you. I mean, DC Derek, don't get me wrong, man. You are going to see that. You are going to see the Cody Rhodes heel turn eventually. I mean, this is one of the most over guys, though, and I really thought that he could still ride the wave. Um, and I, I honestly th thought that he would win the AEW championship someday, eventually, uh, before turning heel, but maybe that won't happen. Eventually, he will turn heel, though. Super chat. Thank you, DC. Party. Uh, DC Derek. What did you think of Battle Royal on NXT today? Donnie Murdoch, I didn't see it yet. I did peek over at it and look at it, and I saw that it was happening, but I didn't watch it enough to give you a good point of view on it. I am going to have an NXT review up on Patreon, though, so look for that either later tonight or tomorrow. I will have a full audio NXT review up on Patreon. I'm going to talk about that. And also, real quick, Donnie Murdoch, I did upload a episode of Corrupted today for free. If anybody wanted to listen to it to see what type of stuff they're missing on Patreon, I uploaded it to Spotify and iTunes. So just search Joe Cronin Show on Spotify and iTunes, and you guys can... Well, there's a lot of stuff on there, but you can listen to the most recent post, which is the Corrupted Podcast for free uh, for everybody so you can sample it, see if it's something you think you want to get into for a dollar shit bomb. a month. So I got my sources wrong, so giving myself the shit bomb donation for that. <laughs> AU Dark is in fact going to be the second show. TNT wanted to potentially be used for future storylines and showcase new upcoming talent that they are bringing into AEW. So you're telling me that so AEW Dark will become a live show where they feature some of the lesser known talent, the Soundwave 92 becoming a shit bum, a $5 shit bum. Soundwave, you are a fucking shit bum. Did you hear that, Jake? Holy shit. I mean, uh whoa. Is that what you're hearing? Uh no, but that'd be if that is the case, that'd be great. That's interesting. I could see them, I could see them doing that, oh, yeah. moving dark to, to TNT and just changing it. Showcase new talent makes sense. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm surprised. Uh, rest in peace, Rocky Johnson. Again, we can't say it enough. Yeah. Um, rest in peace to him, man. One of the best. I'm telling you, man. Some of the best punches and drop kick combination you've ever seen. And uh, just a fucking, he was one of the first um, black athletes, too. Not to fucking, I'm not trying to go SJW. I'm not trying to suck dick hole or whatever. But as a kid, you know, he was one of the first times I saw, like, oh, wow. Like a, like, a black guy from back in the day is, like, kicking ass. You know, I didn't see that normally. Like, you know what I'm saying? The only one I ever saw was, like, Junkyard Dog and stuff. I didn't yeah. see any, like, main... Like, the crowd was popping for Rocky Johnson, is what I'm trying to say. Like, the crowd was on fire for stuff they, he did. He was over. Yeah, and I had never seen that until I, until I was about nine or eight or whatever. So I'm not trying to, like, virtue suck dick, No, no, but, but my, my step-grandfather was the same way. He showed me, you know previous matches of his and it was just like damn you know and, and like you said he was he was so over with the crowd i didn't and really know. revered i didn't know anybody got over like that back then i mean like pedro morales i had seen some of pedro morales before but you know up until then i only knew like andre and hulk hogan and macho man and you know even even everybody else you know like i missed all those other guys you know i didn't see a lot of that shit happen i missed I pretty much missed the big cat Ernie Ladd too. So like guys like that, I just didn't know that that had, that w went down because I was into like WrestleMania four, five, six by the time I started watching wrestling, and so I missed some of that stuff and got to watch it later on. My my step grandfather had two tapes. One of I remember distinctively being Roddy Piper and Rocky Johnson. Yeah, and then the other one I think was Don Morocco, but. Even, I remember watching those. On even repeat. Ric Flair, I didn't get to see Ric Flair a lot until like the same time, like nineteen. I didn't. I'm saying taking on Rocky Johnson. You know, oh yeah, the, okay. I got those you. were the matches. I, yeah. I believe the other one was Don Morocco, but I know the first one was definitely Roddy Piper. So, dude, the old, uh, the old shit with Killer Kowalski at, at like Fenway and stuff like that is really cool. If you ever see any of that stuff, and Bruno San Martino as well, but Killer Kowalski uh, out here, it was just a big deal uh, back then to everybody here. Um, you guys know the ratings war for NXT and AEW is not like the Monday Night Wars. Yeah, no, yeah, we, I think everybody pretty much knows that. It's a little bit different. Yeah, um, uh, you know, we we know that. Pac now, nowadays, said if, if Kane Velasquez was in, you know, AEW, we'd be losing our minds. And I said, no, not at all. 
Yeah, I know you certainly don't give a shit about him. I like UFC, but I never cared for him in the UFC. So he, he does nothing for me in any promotion. Nothing for me. I, I understand if you're a big UFC fan and a big Cain Velasquez fan. That's Even Tyson Fury and, and you know, yeah, I, I like Ronda guys. Rousey in UFC, so I was okay with her coming over. I've never been a huge Brock fan, but, I, I you know, I'm not trying to knock their accomplishments or anything. It's just they're not all that interesting. Yeah. Tyson Fury's telling everybody he's masturbating seven times a day to prepare for his upcoming match, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm doing that. I'm anyway. not joking. That's, that's a, that's a real story. I'm doing that anyway. I don't have a match. Tyson Fury says he's masturbating seven times a day and prep for the, uh, wilder rematch. So the, the first person, by the way, that wants to become a member in the chat, if you become a member tonight, I will scream your name. Like I'm orgasming. Um, but you have to become a member to like the villain is in the chat with that middle finger and everybody gets the cool icons. Uh, the <laughs> membership perks are down below. Click on them. Check it out. You get some bonus shit nobody else can see. And you get some cool icons and all that bullshit. Back to the donations we go. Pay the bills. Do a little basketball Round dance around. off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so hey, sick Lovell. of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Go ahead and do it. I swear to God. What's up, Joe and Jake? Keep up the great work. R.I.P. Rocky Johnson. Rest in peace to Rocky Johnson, A. Lavelle. Uh, thanks for the $10, man. And keep it, goddamn. I'm being censored by the internet. Someone uh, said uh, Tyson Fury, when Rocky Balboa beat his meat, that's not what we meant. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Huh? Hey, I'm yo. beating it off. Sorry. Um, thank you, man. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for dropping $10 on the Super Chat. Three dollars of that will go to the evil corporation known as Google. Google. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yes, I did catch uh, Chris Benoit, da uh, Junior, uh, David Benoit. Um, well, he wants to go by Chris Benoit Junior. Mm. It's kind of cool, but yeah, he's got the, the tights ready. And talking to Our Lady Party. Peace for the theme. Need a TBS six hundred and five show on Saturdays, two hour. Need a TBS six oh five show on Saturdays for two hours. <laughs> what is that like where everybody has to weigh 605 pounds imagine that well because that's where thunder used to be right on tbs yeah yeah so jay uh giles what up jay thanks yeah for the he's success. talking to our lady peace to get his father's uh you know old entrance music um he's got the the wolverine doesn't tights. wwe own that no our lady peace has the oh. rights i guess to the song so to benoit's yeah, whatever theme. Well, I've heard that theme at like all kinds of shit, like sporting yeah, events. Yeah, because they they can lease it out. They have the rights to it, I guess. What? Yeah, so he's he's been talking to the lead singer of Our Lady Peace, and um, there, what else was notable Super from the Jay. interview? He went Super ahead and, and said hey, a few you things. You can't go Tuesday and Thursday because of NBA. Oh, D. Gordon brings up a great point. They can't do Tuesday and Thursday because the NBA. D. Gordon, well, not on you. TNT, but don't they own other channels as well? Like you just said, with TBS and stuff, so we can see what happens. If That's... Kane Vasquez wins Royal Rumble, I will pull my dad, but just hang myself. Oh, David Benoit, that's horrible. That is terrible. But yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people will, to be honest. But yeah, his uh, Austin 316, I'm drinking a fucking beer. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the interview with Chris Van Vliet, uh did a great Chris Van Fish Fillet. You did a great job, great interview. He really did. I mean, hearing David say that that WWE basically won't contact him back because he was at the AEW show. That's so petty. Well, he said that I think now they will, but like he had to go through a lawyer and contact Carano and all these people for WWE yeah. to finally be like, okay, you know, yeah, you're, yeah, you're all right, man. Okay, like, like, like it's weird. He really did that. So petty. He does seem a little bit obsessed with what he's doing and a little bit like, I, I don't want to say like Markish or something or like, I'm not really sure what he's doing yet with this wrestling stuff. Yeah. Cause he said, yeah, I need to wrestle some matches. I need to train. So he's not yeah. ready. And, and I think that's part of it. He still has the, the fan mindset. Yeah. He's kind of got the fan mindset right now. And six years ago he tried, he almost got in the ring and then Jericho stopped him from getting in the ring. I do remember that. Um, and so, yeah, he's got a lot of work to do. He's talking about it, but he's been talking about yeah, it for... he's much older now, and he, he, he didn't have the best, I guess, head on his shoulders then and mindset, and who can blame him with everything that he's dealt with? I mean, imagine we just, you know, had a donation joke, but dealing with that every time you go anywhere online and just constant, you know, I don't want to say harassment, but 
dealing with with you know the, the last moments of your father haunting you. So, yeah, yeah. He works in construction or something, the crane I mean, operator. You, we've, we've all lost loved ones. We both lost our fathers and yeah, people close to us. But but uh, you know to to have to deal with the loss and the, that way, I can't fathom that. That's yeah, I impossible mean, to to manage. So especially in the like middle he said, of high school, he couldn't school. go back to school. He couldn't, and it wasn't the kids giving him a hard time. It was it was just himself. He said his friends didn't. You know, he wasn't bullied about it, and he wasn't. He just couldn't cope. So, yeah, I mean, How fifteen. Could you? That's fucking crazy. I mean, it's a, it's terrible. Like, I, it would be fucked up. I mean, at least, I mean, I know I was eight when I lost my dad, but it was like I was eight, so you could kind of like, you know, start directing. You know, I don't know. It, it sucks no matter what. But I mean, yeah, it's, no matter what, it's hard. But at least then, fifteen's it, 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 a tough. Like, you're you want to make yeah, it. You're so in a habit at fifteen. It, it's already like such a way of life that you're used to. Yeah. At least at eight, you know, you, the fundamentals are there, but you can still adjust and, and you know, plan a new course. Yeah, I became I a psycho. I became a psychopath. <laughs> I, was quite the, I was quite a quiet, nice little kid. And then, woo! We lose our minds Daddy's in the not home anymore, so uh, I'll be the daddy now. But no, um, what else do we miss on AEW, man? I don't, I don't so know what we missed. I, I, I do want to break down a, a bit of the the women's stuff that happened just because really of how outlandish it was it was so bad i mean the, is that because it's the only really the only bad thing that happened yeah because well i'm i'm just perplexed by some of the 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 mindset here i know brandy had to step in because kong awesome kong had not been medically cleared i guess that was what we had heard earlier what? she had an issue so brandy unexpectedly had to step into the wrestling role but the story that they tried to even tell the ring Brandy being afraid of Statlander, but then being able to stand her ground, she she looked schizophrenic. There was a point in time where she's there and she's running from Chris and 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 you know trying to boop her on the nose and you know plea to her not to hit me. And then she's attacking her, but she's not pulling like a Stephanie McMahon where she's like playing possum to get the upper hand. She's she's yeah. just like she's legitimately afraid, but then she's immediately trying to go into badass mode it, it just didn't work it looked awkward yeah. and melanie cruz i'm sorry but oh that was that was painful to watch they they she just couldn't maneuver around anybody she was what throwing stiff shots doing? she she messed up so many so many moves even the fucking the girl who thinks she's from the galactica galaxy or the andromeda yeah, andromeda galaxy yeah she and we like statlander but she did some kind of like standing moonsault or something and completely missed yeah she, she does this like it, it's it's a kick but she she flips back it's like a back it was kick. dumb yeah. and it missed what was she, she doing? does it off the apron and it just looked really sloppy and then even when uh um she went ahead and set up the chair to leap off the chair yeah I have more oomph getting out of bed in the morning than she did leaping off that chair like Man. it just <laughs> it was so flat and just no propulsion at all, no lift. She just like stepped over the chair. Really, there was no jump to it, no give. And and I don't know that the ref didn't care while everything was going on at certain times. Like it, it just they're lax with the rules at certain moments when they shouldn't be, and when they should be, they're they're not. And uh. it was so bad, dude. That was one of the worst women's. And, and you know, you're like, oh, they really got to come back with something, and then they did that, dude. Kenny Omega last week. Went on a Twitter thing about the fans or something, shitting on the fans. Yeah. You should shit on yourself, Omega. Okay. Well, here's the thing Statlander okay. hits, hits Brandy immediately with a, a really high head kick. Brandy gets right back up like she didn't even get hit. So she goes for a huge lariat. And then she hits her with a hell of a Michinoku driver. And Mel breaks up the pin. And then Brandy gets right back up like she never got hit. No sells the entire. You know, three move progression there. Didn't even act like she had been grazed, and I'm like, ah, oh, Christ! You know, I, I, you're not Cody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. And then she, you know, she gets this huge drop kick on Mel. They're on the outside, and Brandy hits Statlander with this big spear, and it's like, oh, you just got the shit kicked out of you, so you can immediately get up and spear her. <laughs> you have no injuries at all. Like, no time has passed. So, I mean, things like that, it just takes you out of it. And 
Obviously, they get the win here, but they shouldn't be winning. They shouldn't be beating these these factions. The, you know, the Dark Order, the Nightmare Collective, the the Butcher and Blade with MJF. Like, you know, these these groups should be being dominant because that's what they're trying to portray themselves as. Luther looked like a fucking creepy pedophile who got <laughs> destroyed for a second week in a row. I mean, he's sitting there licking his thumb and rubbing his forehead like bullseye. What is he doing? The, Why does he keep doing that? Bullseye, eh? You know, doing that creepy Colin Farrell shit. Like, and, and then he gets, again, he gets beaten for the people that weren't here earlier. He gets beaten by women two weeks in a row. His debut night, he gets taken out by a small woman. Tonight, he gets taken out again by a woman. It's but the, it's not like he's ju- he's just getting taken out by a woman. He's getting taken out by women in the in the easiest, most gentle or simplest way possible. Right. Even even take away the women thing because people will be like, oh, what you don't like? That's what women? I'm saying. Like, it, it, it's it, even, even if, if it, it was guys. Woman, even if it was guys. Two weeks in a row, the brand new dangerous death match, scary guy from Japan gets the taken out wise, twice in a Stone row. Jump on him. Why? You're, why? The, why is <laughs> Luther here? Hey, like Brandy and Cody, are you listening to my show for some stupid reason? First of all, I love you. Hire me on commentary. But but the third thing is, why do you have Luther on your show? As anything, he is a scrub piece of garbage. Like why, Billy? Oh my God, the death matches in Japan and people fear him. Oh yeah, the ninety pound Japanese women don't fear him. They're beating the shit out of him. And Kenny Omega, learn how to fucking fucking coordinate this women's division because you suck olivier right i mean you don't suck as a wrestler i love you man but i mean like at, right with the women's division this is horrible jim Cornette is right jake who's this <laughs> it's, a, it's a cross between omega and <laughs> Rio and China combined fucking idiot you fucking have a division full of shitheads you fucking moron fix this fucking division kenny fix this fucking fucking division before jim Cornette's fucking ego grows into the fucking atmosphere because he was right about everything dr luther cuckold (laughs) come on man now i will say after all this shit happened or it might have been right before one of the two they did have a great dark order presentation they're talking to the supreme leader and they have the uh you know the presentation going on in the background and they explain the breakdown how they're they're trying to get through to each member of the elite and what they can do and who they can target how they can get through to certain people you know they can get to omega through nakazawa they you know brandon cutler isn't you know as up and up as they said they can get through him he seems to be the weak link adam page there's a lot of dissension with the elite, so you know you can really go ahead and, and get through to him sooner than later. He should be the the next big member, and uh, you know it, it just they're con- they're I trying mean, to show the world that no one is more powerful than the Dark Order. They went now, full eighties cartoon. Had they not cartoon. gotten their asses kicked the week previously, this would have been even better. Sadly, they they need some huge not victories, but like moments. They need they need to really decimate some people. They need to fuck with people psychologically. They need to 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 really, you know, seem like a, a goddamn evil gothic faction should be. So I like these vignettes that we've gotten from them. I do like the Dark Order, but you know, like like good old Corny said, the 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 Dork Order, you know, or Dork uh, Order, that's how they're viewed because they they've been fooled most of the time by these other groups. They've been getting their asses kicked. How can you take them seriously? So well. I, I do enjoy what they're trying to convey here, but they just need to pull the trigger on them and, 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 and not allow their top guys to always get the best of them. I'm glad you liked it because I wanted to like that promo tonight, and I, I ended up, no. Like, I thought it was a little too corny. I thought it was, like, too, like, Ninja Turtle Shredder, like, we need to contact this one and we could possibly acquire him. Like, I just didn't buy into it at all. I was sitting there thinking, like, I couldn't figure out if I liked it or hated it. I really couldn't. And it's funny because they feel like the Foot Clan, so that, that yeah, really... They, yeah, they feel like the Foot Clan. Yeah, <laughs> they they, I genuinely, mean, And I, 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 you know, mark out at times for that kind of corny stuff because it is explained. As, as stupidly simplistic as that was, 
they had an explanation from start to finish of what they were doing and how they were going to get there. Uh, no, and that's I, what I like. When there's an explanation. Sense, so. I just don't like the execution. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, no, I I can't argue that because I've easy. honestly gone back and forth. I think some of these vignettes and promos, I've been like, that was pretty cool. But then there's another one, and I'll be like, that's really cheesy. And then yeah, because you enjoyed the one where they were on the bus and the subway, I believe, in the beginning, and I didn't care for that one or yeah. one of them. And it's it's you know, so we kind of been opposites, you know, back and forth. But I, I, overall, I, I, I like comes... the idea of the group with Evo Uno and and what they can do. It just they have not executed this near properly whatsoever so I, I think one of the issues with that shot if i was directing that isn't it was it evil uno who's the guy the leader what's his uh, name well we don't know who the the exalted one is but yeah evil uno is the one i thought evil uno was the guy he's he's the the head in charge now but there's someone behind the scenes pulling the strings so but see, I w so I would have cut to him at the table, like in a dark mask or in a dark looking whatever. I think we were missing, maybe that cut would have been, and it would have looked creepy. It would look goofy there too, but I don't know. I think they're avoiding that because I don't think they know who's going to be the leader yet. I but think it, they but that's had a few ideas voice. and it hasn't paid off yet. But that's his voice though, so it's okay to show him, right? Yeah, him, yeah, but I think they're still trying to get behind the supreme leader but you I know, don't care the, the, about that. If 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 that scene is him talking and the other guy, they could have cut to him a little bit more. Gotcha. Yeah. Because okay. it's not a yeah, surprise that, sense, that but... he's talking. Yeah. But yeah. It was just I don't know. I felt it to be awkward staring at the slides so long and the guy. I just felt it cheesy. I don't know why. So you want more of like a shot reverse shot where we see the different angles back and forth. Yeah. Or it it it, it sort of shot differently. The the way the guy was acting it was so eighties cartoon villain. It was like. And then we got these guys, and there was no cuts. Yeah, I, Bond I, villain. Yeah, type. like I felt the lack of cuts because of the guy's acting was so cheesy that they needed to have more cuts that were darker, and then maybe shots of the guy talking with the dark voice, and like maybe something going on there, and it would have just it would have actually. Yeah, I this is really. I didn't take uh, that as being evil Uno. I thought that was supposed to be like a, a voice modular of the supreme leader i thought that was supposed to be whoever they're trying to hide the identity oh, of if that's the case then i thought that's why they weren't showing his face so i'm but not understanding that then so if that's the case then... i think that's what they were going for personally because they, they did say that you know this is the presentation to the supreme leader but so i, I think they're still trying to hide the identity of whoever the, the i thought the they were calling person the... pulling the strings i is. call him fatso i thought they were calling fatso the supreme leader so i guess not no, there's there's someone else above all of this, and that's why we had so much speculation. Could it be someone like Marty Skrull? Could it be, you know, uh, Brody Lee? Could it be Matt Hardy? You know, people have thrown out hundreds of ideas. People have said it's Jim Cornette because they had a tennis racket in one of their videos. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how awesome? We've hey, seen, if it was Cornette. No, we've, we've said this. We have said this. We have, how awesome it would be if Palpatine, it was Cornette. Yeah, Dude, they would boo the shit out of him. They would. He would get real fucking heat from the, this crowd and these people. It would be so awesome. That's why I said he's he, Cornette's calling him the the dork odor, you know. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> but then he's in the fucking thing and he's the yeah, leader because they had his looking glasses get thrown at somebody and they had the tennis racket. So, oh my god, it would be so fucking hilarious! Like it would that would been, be that would be uh, entertaining for sure, especially after you know all the controversy they just had with him. <laughs> to see him in the SJW ish, yeah. you know, all inclusive, all the dumb AEW. fans on Twitter that would get angry. Are you serious, AEW? Uh, you know this guy's a racist. The guy yeah, he just got taken off of power, and now you're. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you really serious? TNT. <laughs> Well, faggots. <laughs> God, I hate the fucking Twitter people. Uh, Sammy Guevara had a match. Obviously, we we talked about with Moxley. We covered that before. The one thing I didn't mention was Guevara had his cue cards once again when they go to picture in picture. I like that. It's creative. I think it's funny. It, it's the same shtick, but at least they're sticking with it. You know, it's it's one of his defining traits, and he's he's trying. You know, he was blowing kisses to the bikini clad lifeguard that they had there, and. He's just a mark for himself. So I, I like what Guevara's doing. Moxley and him put on a good match. I noticed on Twitter some people weren't happy that Guevara almost got the better of him. No, oh, But yeah, I, I, I appreciated what they did, like I said earlier, because it wasn't like, uh, you know, it was a total one-sided victory. It's just that Sammy, once he got that one move to the outside, you know, that, that double knee, 
that's when he was able to get the advantage because Moxley didn't see it coming and, and kind of <laughs> used his own weight against himself, got hurt on the apron you know, corner. And festival. From there, Sammy was able to capitalize. So it wasn't like he just beat his ass from, from you know, post to pillar. It, it's just he he was able to, to go ahead and, and be tactical about it. So I, I liked that what, you know, they had the story that they told there. Then Moxley, of course, starts to whoop ass again. And I, I really like that it ended in a submission. That rear naked rear naked choke Naker. looked great. And uh I I'm happy to see a little more from his repertoire. You know, not the not the same paradigm shift week in and week out. So Yeah, give it a little something different. I was okay as long as he didn't lose. But I, I can't get over this Cornette thing, Jake. I'm still thinking about Cornette Lake. Like, like, like <laughs> think so about, much you could do with that. Think about there Paul is Bear. Endless amounts of fucking greatness that could come from Cornette being no, he's the like, head of the Dark Order. I had enough. I'm gonna kill wrestling. I'm gonna kill it. You people have killed wrestling. I'm gonna bury it under the ground. I'm well, gonna he bury said he would, it. The first order of business, if he took over the Dark <laughs> Order, would be to fire everyone in the Dark Order. Oh wow. <laughs> He and I'm like, that's such a thing for him to do. Like he would, he would cast out everyone and then start anew, and then you'd have all the dark attack. water people begging to get back in. You First know? person they attack is Kenny Omega, and Cornette's got like a dark blood red shirt, like like kind of like Paul Bear, how he dressed when he was with Kane when he was oh yeah when he was bad. He cut some of the best promos ever. Like Cornette could have done that too. I mean, I really AW's got to look into that. But I got to play some donations. Also, Josh, Mister Cabretti. Cabretti's in the house with the $5 on Patreon. Welcome uh, back to the Patreon, Josh. And thank you, sir, uh, for uh, becoming a patron of mine. And thank you to everybody else. And again, the ghost of Tommy's barber for going up to the 10 spot. Super, Super chat. chat party. What up, NK? The Dark Order is a gay nightclub. The Butcher and the Blade are security guards. True story. Tony Khan told me. Burp. <laughs> NK, thank you. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh my God! But it's the butcher and the bunny. Don't you don't you know them? It's like, and oh my goodness, look out! Here he comes! Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen! I don't believe it. Luther, the most dangerous Japanese deathmatch wrestler that wreaked havoc in Japan. Oh wait, two women have beat him up two weeks in a row. Ha ha ha! I mean, maybe that's the gag. I don't know. Yeah, we talked about that all wrestling a little bit ago. Uh, the Twitch is banned <laughs> on uh, Im Impact Wrestling is banned on Twitch. Uh, it's kind of funny. I tweeted it out earlier, and I was just laughing because these guys luck. They give the title to Tessa Blanchard. All this racist stuff comes out about her that day. Um, now they're banned on Twitch. Super I mean, jet. it's fucking Super hilarious. Jet. Hey, Joe, what's going on, man? Monetize this is great. Thank you, Charles Wright. Thank you for watching Monetize This over on Corrupted Nation. Sometimes Monetize This comes back to Joe Cronin Show. Sometimes it stays over on Corrupted. It really depends on Super what's going jet. on. Thank you, man. Super can you hand me that Coco Beware doll over there? <laughs> that is a uh, joke from a Corrupted Podcast last weekend. Uh, Drew Bar, thanks, man. You definitely got to <laughs> check that out, man. That is not Do a, a little Coco basketball Beware. dance off the concrete. <laughs> I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Have you guys heard about MLW show might be going on Showtime or some other major TV network? They are looking to go on a major TV network. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are live right now. MLW, my name is Joe Cronin, and I am your commentator. So MLW, what are you doing? Reach out to Joe Cronin and fire that other slob that you have working for you. Uh, Robert, um, Sarah Sully, what's up, man? How you doing, um, Robert? Thank you, man. Yeah, I've heard about MLW uh, getting a deal somewhere. And, uh, yeah, very interesting, man. It seems like there's this big demand for wrestling again in a weird way, even though it's in a kind of a – it's just in this little t tiny niche area, but it's it's like it's doing better. Wrestling does better than 50% of the what other programming. So, Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Bizarre. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. I just had a horrible thought. I think Vince could invest more money into 205 Live and air it on USA to try and counteract AEW's second show before it even airs on TNT. Oh, no. I am 100 convinced that Vince would do it to even with XFL around the corner. Yeah, that's a great point, Soundwave92. He'll do it with anything, man. He'll cock block anybody, even just to take away 10% of their audience. He'll do it. It's unreal, but smart in a way. 
Um, thank you so much, Soundwave and Rob and uh, Sasha Banks. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. What's up to my Boston honey? Uh, went to the same wrestling school, Sasha. Do you remember me? I was wrestling uh, while you were just joining up over there at the New England Wrestling Academy Killer Kowalski School. Uh, come on, Sasha. Don't you remember me, Mercedes? Come on, give me some love. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for that. Really appreciate that. And a, and a big shout out to um, shout out to the Girdles. Shout out to shout out the Girdles because he is the top donator of the stream so far at fifty one dollars. And he is taking home that JCS Digital Championship tonight, potentially, unless somebody beats him out for it. But right now, it's him. Uh, shout out to the girdles. Shout out to the girls and shout out to Drew. Gatekeeper Drew, what do you got to say tonight, Drew? Testicle Festival. Ooh. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Dicks and testicles and... Oh. Ooh. Oh, I can come... Ooh. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Testicle Festival. That's just a weird dude, man. You know, Drew, what is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you, bro? Sick bastard. Uh, anything else we missed? Well, there's something else we kind of missed. I mean, first of all, Darby Allen and Pac at the end there. I thought that was yeah. really good. Um, before we get there, Dustin Rhodes, QT Marshall, and DDP taking on the Butcher, the Blade, and MJF. The right people won here. DDP looked good. He, I'm glad that they didn't have the aging veteran you know, wipe the floor with everyone. But they did allow him to, to look competent. And uh, Matt the Misfit let me know that the last time DDP wrestled was also with Dustin Rhodes in Impact. So go figure. That was his last match. Now he's with Dustin again. That's hilarious. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, good match here. We, we see him hit the Butcher and the Blade with, with a few lariats before we get the Diamond Cutter. And then he, you know, build into the crowd. He's got one for MJF. But then he gets low blowed and... You know, it it just kept building towards obviously trying to get the uh, the diamond cutter, but uh, that didn't pay off, and that's good that we didn't get the payoff for that yet. We don't want to see MJF get his comeuppance until Cody gets a hold of him. So Evan Wright also says MJF sold his ass off for DDP. He absolutely yes, did. Yes, he did. Absolutely. So MJF good. is great in the ring. So they Never did a great job. Him. They he's the he's the little million dollar man. Man, it's it's really good stuff. Um, and yeah, like you said, they got they didn't lose, so good. You know, they they did that was booked great. I thought it was fun, perfect. Nobody looked wrong. DDP didn't look bad. You know, he looked perfectly fine for what he is. That was fun, and I really really enjoyed that man. So, um, yo, Big Fuego in the chat, what up, man? Big and then shout JR out to Big says, Fuego. "Oh, we gotta get cameras backstage. There's something big going on, and you know, it makes it sound like there's a fight. Yeah, and it's just Jericho backstage." Basically saying that you know I'm I'm I already kicked the shit out of Moxley and it's not my fault for him turning me down, uh, an eye for an eye. And then he said that whoever wins the main event tonight will be the true number one contender. How was he able to talk while talking to that smoking hot girl? That woman is blinded like, by beauty. Wow, baby. what the he's, fuck he's is her name? Talented. What is her name again? I do not remember. I know someone in the chat will, will well, nail it for us. Well, while we're waiting for that, uh, Coco Beware, we talked about this on a Corrupted Podcast the other night, but I just want to play it for you one time because uh, it's just such a wonderful, wholesome clip that, every, <laughs> that everybody uh, right now listening will enjoy, especially anybody who uh, might be black. Mark the date down, Monday, August 28th, SummerSlam, Meadowlands. It's going to be something else. Pay-per-view, <clears throat> closed circuit. Well, Could you, you do me that. a favor? Could you hand me the Coco Beware doll there? That's not a Coco Beware doll. <laughs> Happens to be a little gorilla. Oh, he looks a lot brighter than Coco Beware. Yeah. <laughs> Always insulting. I'm sorry. Humiliating. He doesn't oh look God. as bright as Coco Beware. <laughs> oh my God. Hand me that Coco Beware doll. Can you imagine? Can you imagine nowadays, like them on a set and being like. And Bobby Heenan be like, "Hey, could you could you do me a favor? <laughs> could, could you hand me that Kofi Kingston doll right over there? <laughs> that would be god and, and awful." And then just look and just look and be like, "That is not a Kofi Kingston doll. That's <laughs> a, that's a stuffed gorilla." Oh, and the way they play off of each other in that clip, it's, <laughs> oh it's priceless. Um, come to find out, her god. name, Joe, thanks to the chat, is Tits McGee. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, that's right no. because MJF called her Tits McGee. That's right. Yeah, no, her name is uh, Boobies McMotorboat. Sorry, I got that wrong. Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys. Oh, her name. Thank you, Evan. Evan Wright said it's Jen Decker. 
Oh yeah, Jen Decker. Jen Decker, yeah, Decker, that's right. Pussy. Tits McGee. So MJF is a legend for that one, but yeah, she certainly is gorgeous, no doubt about that. I mean, that girl is. Um, I don't usually gawk over anybody, like, because I don't give a shit. Like, to be honest, like guys are always like, "Who that girl? That girl, the titties, and like, look at the girl." <laughs> Like, but like, wow! I don't know what it, I saw that girl. And I was like, man, Jericho is a pro. Jer, that's how good you know Jericho is because while sitting there with that in front of him, he cut that promo without blinking or stumbling or nothing. He stared right at her and gave her that promo. I would have fucking, I might have passed out. Yeah, she's got a clip with her and Janelle on Twitter, him showing off his braided hair, and, and she's got this green dress on. Just oof, holy damn. Christ! Like, what in the Hot world? Hot damn! But like you said, you know that. The build to that with Jr. and everything, I'm like, what the hell is is going on? This makes no sense at all. I, I'm, you know, the way they were building into it, it sounds like there was a huge fight backstage, and it's just Jericho getting ready to deliver a continued promo, which is fine. But we got to get cameras back there. There's a huge commotion, and it's it's just Jericho ready to talk. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. That that's typical Jr. We got to get TSS to throw together a compilation every time Jr. has said just on AEW, you know, whip him like a government mule because he got to say it again tonight. So, <laughs> well, it's it's been doing when they were well. whipping uh, Moxley with the belt, that's his go-to line. Let me uh, drop another donos coming in Super from Jay. Salty Super Cameron. Jay. What's up, Salty? Jake the Alcoholic Snake is the Dark Order leader. Jake the Alco. Oh my God! Imagine if it's Jake the Snake. Trust me, we're gonna get everybody. I really hate what wrestling has become. And that's why I came here to AEW. And I'm going to take out every last one of you with a DDT right to the head. Trust me. Hey, fucking, oh my God, it would be crazy. DDP is the goddamn Dark Order leader. <laughs> that would be wild. Uh, Salty be- Cameron, thank you, man. What's up, Salty? And now we've got... Uh, Baron Corbin crapping on AEW. Oh on no! Twitter, so Baron Corbin. <laughs> he said, "Winner gets a title shot." So forget covers. Everybody, spot, 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 dive, 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 spot, dive, spot, dive. Get your shit in, neck beards. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, and I mean, then he has, like, you know, the puppet vomiting gif. So. He's not. He's not that wrong. He's not that wrong. I mean, he's it not. Was, but uh, but you know what? It was more entertaining than the shit that he does usually. So fuck see, him. And I will say once again, this this is kind of the point I was getting to the other night. With every, I feel like they try and give you the best match possible, even if it they shouldn't. At times, right, right, they, right. I feel like they sh- they they always give you the best match that they possibly can. Even when the women suck, you know they're trying. Granted, it's not good, but I I always feel like they're <clears throat> consistently giving us the best match they can. Yeah, and Excuse that's me. all. That's with all, WWE, yeah. my my point the other day was I don't feel like they're they're going out there with the mindset of all right, let's let's kill ourselves so we can give that crowd and the audience at home the best match possible. I feel like they're just strictly like if we get that one spot and they chant this is awesome, let's go home. You know, like that that was my point that I was trying to get to the other night. Hmm. I mean, I mean, all, all I can tell you is I wasn't furious. I know that like it, if something really angers me that it's so ridiculous. I have been furious before by Young yeah. Bucks matches. You've heard me. I've come out and said, "Oh yeah, fuck that match. I don't care." But I don't feel like it's me. been that painstakingly obvious lately. Yeah, I don't feel like bad. they've done five hundred super kicks and they've had you know still too many suicide dives and, but it's not seven in a match and it's not three hundred super kicks and they've they've toned down that Young Bucks style, if you can call it that, uh. <laughs> or lack thereof. We see more selling. We see more coverage and pinfalls. We see less kickouts of of crazy, crazy maneuvers. You know, granted, we also had Moxley and Omega kill each other in a hardcore match, but that was more just strictly spectacle. But everything before then, you know, I feel like we're getting less of that indie style. There's still more of it than WWE. Yeah. Granted, but I, I feel like they've toned that down and have really tried to tell better stories in the ring rather than just have spot after spot after spot. Well, I think that some matches, you know, I, I guess some matches don't have some matches do, uh, do the story stuff. And then sometimes they just want to have an all out just insanity. And I mean, that was just chaotic. It was so chaotic. That it was perfect because they got the crowd going. Um, so but even even tonight, I, I, I would say everything had a story behind it. Everything had a purpose. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I I would argue that 
as a hill to die I, on. I think actually, he's because talking about even the, even the opening with with as much chaos as they brought, they were still worried about expressing that. All right, the elite we're going to have dissension because Kenny Omega, you know, just cost the Young Bucks their title shot, and they feel like they should be the champions. And we also have. Obviously, Hangman, who's going to turn on Kenny at some point, so there's that to watch out for. How are they coexisting? Um, we we had a, a, a attempt at a story with Brandy Rhodes, you know, fearing Statlander. It didn't work, but they tried. Moxley and Guevara had had a good story that also built into Moxley losing his eye at the end. You know, it, that was uh, yeah, but that was good. But I, I think Corbin's just talking about that match and what I would do. I think he's with, just saying in general. Well, he's, I think he was talking in about AEW. that match with that match in AEW. That because that's the match he's tweeting about. So that match, yeah, it is a little ridiculous. But I think they should build on the on the Young Bucks being like that being their style, and even Jr. saying like, you know, they've got a crash and burn attitude. They don't go in with like le- other legends and other tag teams in history would never do what they're doing. They would have a strategy of what they're doing, and they would rely on their technical skills and a strategy. And you know, the Young Bucks. You know, they really just go out there and look to throw it all, you know, at the wall and try to do anything they can to take out their opponents, this crash and burn style. And that style has worked for them. It's kind of like a batter going to the plate. You know, like, remember Vladimir Guerrero, Guerrero, the batter in baseball for the Angels? This guy would come up there. Well, he'd come (laughs) up to the plate, man. He would just fucking shake the bat and he would just swing at everything, dude. It would be outside, up, down, and he would just look to smash the ball. No, yeah, no three strikes what. and three swings. Yeah, so, that's what yeah. the young buck. I, I would try to paint them like that. They live and die by what, like it's crash or burn or fucking. It's it's all or nothing with the young bucks, and they don't really go on with the strategy. And sometimes, that's you know you can't really predict what they're gonna do because of that, and that's helped them and it's hurt them because they've made mistakes. So if they sort of keep painting it that way. Like it, I, I like that the idea of painting them that way. But you know, sometimes their matches piss me off too, and I go, what the fuck. Why did yeah, they do and we've that? called them out for that before. I just feel like they've toned it down, not drastically, but I've noticed the difference of them trying to tell more story. So yeah, I feel like it's noticeable to some extent. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, not, honestly, you know, in, in the beginning for the first few weeks, I was like, "All right, this is going to be." Feel, we even said it kind of felt like a problem. Oh yeah, but since then, I feel like they've they've tried to. And they also needed time to build. They had to wow the crowd at first, you know, because they you didn't know who the people were and there was no story that you could build off of. So it was also like dual fold, you know, as much as it was frustrating because we knew who they were, a good portion of the crowd had never seen these people. So they had to wow them by doing the spot fest crazy stuff to get people to tune in. So I get it, but I also uh, want to shout out to Charles Wright. He just became a $5 patron as well. So shout out to Charles Wright. He's been supporting on the channel recently quite a bit here, and now he's uh, joined the Patreon, Charles, man. Check out all the shit on the Patreon, dude. I've literally uploaded Morning Madness 200, Corrupted Podcast Saturday, and Part 1 of me and Tommy's Honestly Podcast, Episode 12, Part 1. Part 2 is dropping. I think it's going to drop tomorrow for everybody on Patreon. So look for that. Part 2 coming tomorrow. Um, And then Corrupted will be again Saturday night. So it's just been... It's crazy. Go check out Patreon. There's so much shit to download and check out and all that bullshit. And up and uh, episode 133 is up for free on uh, iTunes and Spotify. If you just look up Joe Cronin Show on iTunes, Joe Cronin Show on Spotify, go give me some likes and reviews. Desperately needed if you can do that. Give me some likes and reviews on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Joe Cronin Show sh- should pop up. And episode 133 of Corrupted should be there in full for free to check it out. Um, what's up to the chat? What do you guys think of AEW tonight? Out of 10, leave it in the chat, and we'll see if we can get some other ideas. Shout out to Gatekeeper Drew uh, in the chat uh, doing some modding. Anything else uh, that you have to say about AEW tonight? Um, Darby Allen, Pac. I hate seeing Allen lose again. It is disheartening. I knew that Pac was going to be the, the the victor in this match, obviously, but it, it kind of in a way breaks my heart because Darby Allen is, is so over with the crowd. They, he comes out to this raucous ovation and you know what people I do? are just genuinely behind him. And I, I feel like he's been fed to everyone at this point, it seems. He, he lost to Moxley. Uh, he lost to Jericho. He lost to Cody. And he, he, lo- he loses to Pac now. It's weird, though, Jake. I still love this guy. Like I still, Oh, I, I still do as well. I'm still feeling oh. him. Like I'm still feeling him like sexually. No, but Jake... Here's what I would do if AEW, if anybody's listening, 
I want Darby Allen um, on camera next week. Uh, there's Darby Allen. Where is he going? Um, Darby Allen's at a bar. And, you know, uh, Jimmy Havoc's out with him. And I would love them to kind of spoof what happened with Jimmy Havoc at Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Yeah. And I would love Jimmy Havoc <laughs> yeah. to be like, I, it, I don't know why you're getting all these chances. You know, you get the fucking this match and that match and you fucking lose every time. If they give it to me, I would have won it. You know, I would I could have maybe win it. Maybe you give me one of your mat, your opportunities and I'll do something with it. And then Darby Allen just be like, what the fuck? And then Jimmy pushes his buttons and then they have a bar fight. You know, they have a little bar, have a little bar fight you can cut to. You know, they're beating the shit out of each other all over the bar. And then um, then they announce a match between the two the next week. Um, and then they have a match the next week. Just just build a little story. And then, you know, Darby Allen gets his win back, beats Jimmy Havoc. Yeah. Um, and granted, you know, I see people in the chat. Well, of course he lost to those people. He's top. They're, they're all top guys. Yeah. Granted, but it would have been nice to in between those profile losses, he gets a few well legitimate victories as I, well. So. I don't mind it. I know that it's not a huge problem yet. I feel like it could become one, though. Normally, I would agree, though, with you. And I'd be like, this is weird. But for some reason, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't feel he's been damaged yet by this at all. So because I feel like I still feel like he's he's not a top, top guy, but he is a top mid carder. Like he's a top mid card guy. And maybe that's what Pac is, too. But Pac is starting to sort of, like, jump above the top mid-card into the, like, we're for real deal. Like, yeah. so, I don't know, man, but Darby Allen. So, I think that now now Darby Allen has to get back to sort of winning. Like, having matches yes. where... Now's, now's the telling point. You know, yes. this, is, this is where the scales can tip. You used him as much as you could. You built him. You put him on the main stage. You gave him You made him look events. strong in defeat. Yeah, he's really done well. He really has done well. A lot of charisma, getting over with the crowd, and, and pretty organically as well. So it, 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 this is this is murky water, though. It's dangerous territory. Like I said, he's not ruined, he's not buried, he's not destroyed. But there's a, a you know a chink in the armor. He's he's got to go Whoa. ahead and, and be prepared for what's to come. Did you just? What did you as soon say? as I said that, I said, I, uh, shit, I know what's coming. Did you just <laughs> Did you just say something about Mia Yim? I, I did not. I'm not pulling a Shane Gillis on SNL here. I'm, I'm being careful. You cocksucker. Um, uh, young Yi would be proud. No, I'm just kidding, everybody. I love you. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, listen, guys. Um, I would give it a 7.5. I, I, I really, I, there was a lot that I really enjoyed tonight. There was a lot of good story. Yep, and especially I've been I've been down in AEW the past few weeks because it's been easy to be down in them because they haven't had their best foot forward. So I I tonight didn't originally give a shit about Bash at the Beach, and I wasn't really looking forward to this show. There was nothing that I was like, "Ooh, this is gonna." Even with the matchups, granted, they turned that around. They left they left me wanting more. When the show went off the air, I said, "Damn, I'm really looking forward to see what happens next week now." They have a huge problem, too, because they, they keep Testicle throwing these, festival. these dream matches away, in a sense. Like, I, I keep going back to Omega and, and Moxley, but, you know, we're now we had Darby Allen and, and uh, Pac tonight. You know, that, that, that one's out now. So we really need to be careful, and I hope they, they build up other feuds as a bigger deal going forward. But they are telling a good story for most things, so... I think they're learning, and and as time progresses, they're getting better with the TV stuff too. We didn't have audio botches tonight. The commentary was certainly not as bad as it's been, so that was an improvement. We haven't really made any comments about the commentary tonight. Yeah, Jr. did kind of lose his mind a few times, but certainly nothing like weeks past. Yeah, so the, that, we, that's a, that's an improvement as well. We're not you sitting know it's here good. shitting on the commentary. You know that's it's noticeable. good when we didn't bring up the commentary at all. We didn't bring it up. It just kind of blended in. So that's got to be good. Yeah, I guess. Exactly. So that that's a huge point as is. Yeah, I mean, um, that is a major point because we have picked on the commentary like crazy, and maybe it's still not the greatest, but it it, it was so okay that we like again you, we didn't mention it. So good, yeah, good pick up on that, man, because that's that's a big thing. Absolutely. Um, I am going to be doing a lot of crazy shit on Patreon over this coming week. So please jump over there and check out Patreon. We just hit 388 patrons. Um, check out all the tiers and the rewards. You can get anything you want plugged, your show, your product, whatever you have. Uh, or you can just get your name credited down below in the description box and on the show if you're at $25 and above a month. That is a big tier, but a lot of people are jumping on it. 30 people up there now. 
And then, of course, the hundreds that are in the one, two, three, five dollar tiers and ten dollar VIP tiers. Thank you to all the patrons for making it what it is. And thanks to the twenty-five dollar patrons like ADTR, Arknolia Strokelbean, Awandi Big M, Big Fuego, Jacob Bryan, Harper, CJ Bradley, Cold Brew Crew, Dan H. Cora, Daniel Cater, Drew Barr, one hundred, Dwayne Crenshaw, Frog Kid, Gary Metzler, Gerald Armstrong, Joe Compton, the Renegade, and uh, John Constipated Rock, John Zippe, Joseph Lightsey, Kalel Bama. Star Scream, Matt Ross Meyer, Mike Torian, Mike E2, Crikey, Nikki J. Shaw, Brian, Sith Negan, Talk to Me Nice, The Bear 1322, Tony Diesel, and The Man Z, The Reaper. Thank you all for being producers and keeping my show alive and keeping me and Jake sexy on these wrestling nights and all the other content I do. My other channel, Corrupted Nation, thank you guys for getting me over 11,000 subs as we talk about tons of shit that's not wrestling related. We do comedy and just have a good fucking time with all the podcasts there, the stuff I put up on iTunes and the Joe Cronin Show iTunes and Spotify, Patreon, 30 hours a month that you you know can't hear on YouTube, um, and then the 20, 30 hours we do on YouTube, or 30 hours we do on YouTube a week that's free. I mean, like it's uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do that, so thank you for that. That's badass, and if you can't do all that, hit the like button down below, share the videos, tell people about the show, Tell your rich uncle about the show, and if your rich uncle likes me, he'll uh, donate and be a part of the show, because you guys are the sponsors. I don't have really any sponsors or any support from Google, so thank you. Um, Tomorrow night is going to be huge for Out of yeah. Nowhere. So much cool. news. I mean, we, I only mentioned the DX thing in passing, but that's because I tweeted it out earlier. But are you ready for the Royal Rumble, Joe? Are you ready? Because Kane is ready. That's right. Kane will be returning Friday to SmackDown. Possibly with a rumble announcement, Ooh. we'll see what happens. So you're going to want to tune in tomorrow night to see, hear I'm, all about that. See, I'm That's telling right. you, Jake, these guys are all, they're building up, they're building up the surprise guys. I feel yeah, like that's they're, what they're doing. They're, they're giving away all their announcements just to have that one huge surprise. Yeah, so. because they want the one big surprise to beat Brock or to surprise Brock. And the, and the other guys are all going to be like, you know, Fodder. like like it like it's building them up. So now here comes Kane. The big announcement: Kane's going to be there. Here comes Kane. Oh, Brock throws him out. Here comes Big Show. He said he was going to do it. Oh, there goes Big Show. Yeah, That's Kane the goal. has more Rumble matches than anyone in history. You right, know, more eliminations than anyone in history. And here comes know? here comes Kane Velasquez. He's going to get his revenge. They're going to build this story with them. Maybe no, he's going to get fucking thrown out. I'm telling you. And then this big return is going to happen. And because all those people that you kind of like. That, that are kind of returning, that announced it, and now here they are coming out. They're going to get cheered a little bit. Then they're going to get eliminated. It's going to be this huge fucking show. This is going to be the the biggest gimmicked Royal Rumble that we've seen, I believe, in a long time. Like, there's going to be... This is a gimmick within the gimmick of the... It's it's crazy. I think you're going to be... If, if you're looking for the traditional Royal Rumble, I think some people are going to be surprised what they do this Royal Rumble. At least with the men's side, I think. I think the women's side right. is going to be... Traditional. More traditional, but the men's side, they're they're really trying to make it a spectacle, an all-out, you know, warfare in terms of Brock. They're, will, they're, this is going to be one of those story rumbles, so we'll see. But Will they go I mean, first lots, or last? Lots of news on the horizon with that, with the rumble itself, with Worlds Collide, with NXT Portland, you know, the takeover there. Um, some updates with, with other stars appearing, like Tyson Fury. We'll see what happens. Uh, injury updates. We also have some contract updates and uh, some some interesting hirings going on within the company. Lots of lots of news tomorrow. You're gonna you know jam packed show. That's for sure. Can you dig it, sucker? Lot to go off of. So you're, you're gonna want to make sure you tune into Out of Nowhere tomorrow on YouTube. Check out Out of Nowhere, guys. Um, tomorrow night, 11 p.m. Eastern Time U.S. Uh, we might even be live a little bit earlier, but I think it will be 11 p.m. Eastern Time U.S. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big show. There's so much wrestling news that I didn't cover today. We didn't cover. We haven't even gotten into the Triple H uh, page comments and the apology. So we're going to get into that tomorrow. There's, there's, trust me. There's so much shit tomorrow. It's fucking unbelievable. But I love it. And and think about it. If we have a good news day tomorrow, leading up to out of nowhere, we could have a fucking tomorrow night is going to be a long, a big show. I mean, there's, I, I've got like holy good shit, fifteen stories. Big, you know, big stories so far, you know, set up. So, I mean, it, it's going to be, it, it's going to be a big show. Can we no pat, doubt about can we it. pat the backs now because the raw ratings came out yesterday and talk about pretty much spot, spot on, spot on, yeah, big time. You know, we said it'd be down to a two. You actually said, I believe, two point oh one, and there we go, the lowest third hour 
non-holiday ever. The third lowest third hour ever. Mm-hmm. Now, real quick, I, I'm going to let Jake go in a second. I'm going to take a call or two tonight. I want to hear what you guys have to say about AEW really quickly. If somebody really wants to get on, I want to get uh, you on the phone. Yeah, a few people in the chat before said they wanted to call in. They asked if we were taking calls. So I saw a lot of calls come in tonight, and because Skype is fucked up, we can't do it. But now when Jake leaves, I will take your call. And, um, you know, Jake, you know, if there's anything for Jake, you know, he'll respond later. And yeah, I always try and stay around in the chat. So I, I think potentially we're going to shift over to Discord. I think tomorrow night on Out of Nowhere, we're going to go to Discord. So anybody who has the can be on Discord, and especially if you're a Patreon, um, I'm going to set the link up so you can join us for a little bit so we can take a lot of calls from people on Discord. So if you don't if you don't have a Discord, make a Discord, get Discord going because we're going to take you into the room with us tomorrow and Patreon. It's easy, it's free. It's free. Yeah, I mean pa- patrons are going to get special preference uh, tomorrow. So uh look for that on out of nowhere. It's going to be a big big show. I'm promising that. Um but yeah, Jake man, thank you so much uh for everything and what a good night. I'm going 7.5 too. Yeah, can't beat it. So thank you, everyone. Stay sexy, and we'll see you tomorrow for Out of Nowhere. Boom. At Countdown ended on Twitter. Countdown ended on YouTube. Jake DeMarco, he does so much shit for me. He does so much work for me. Jake has become so good at this that, like, I don't even have to write down the notes. I just let Jake do that part, and I just react to it. Um, He's been such a huge help. It's kind of unbelievable. Uh, What's going on, man? How you doing? How you doing, caller? Nothing. I had a question with AEW thinking about making another show. Isn't that going to be like a wrestling? Uh, aren't you going to get burned out? I mean, I, I guess people could get burned out, but you know, I'm not. I'm, I don't think I'm going to get burned out. No. Oh, okay. And my, I have another question. Sure. Since AEW wants to keep reviews and the lights going off, what if the lights go off and then when they come back on, you see uh, Drew's wife in the ring, full of uh, black cum? Oh, full of. Oh, no. Oh, my God, you son of a bitch. You asshole. Full of black man's cum. Oh, Drew's wife, you sick son of a bitch. Testicle festival. Oh, damn it. Uh, 412, hello. Hey, Joe, what's going on? Um, you know, I, I know you guys didn't talk too much about the commentary tonight, and you said it like wasn't too bad. You didn't notice it, but goddamn, Excalibur is fucking horrible. Do I, you not hear him talking over everyone else? Well, you know what? I got to tell you one thing. Um, tonight, I had the uh, show on the speakers, and a couple times, like I was doing some things at the same time. So I was wondering if maybe I just didn't notice because I was multitasking tonight, which is not something I normally do. So, yeah, you're Mm. telling me that he was, like, bowling over. I mean, maybe that came from the back. Maybe they were like, you know what, dude? Bowl over everybody because you're the guy we want to be heard. Yeah, I think JR's just been so sloppy recently in the last few weeks that maybe they gave, like, Excalibur more of, like, free reign to, like, say his bullshit. But it's just, like, he tries to, like, you know, he gets really intricate with all the names and everything. And and Tony and and JR are kind of, like, you can feel them, like, kind of looking out of the corner of their eyes like hmm this fucking guy like what did <laughs> him and his tope suicidas and shit well they even made I don't a, know. It's just well weird. jr did what i what i can't stand tonight again he said um and i and i don't blame him because i call when i whenever i call a, a full nelson suplex i call it a full nelson suplex i've been i've been calling wrestling and when i see that i go full nelson suplex you know but they call it you know the dragon snap su- the snap dragon suplex i don't call it that i call it a full nelson suplex but you know JR was like, oh, well, now it's called something else or whatever. And it was like, oh, my God, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Have a fucking meeting before the show and say, here's what I call. I heard you say something today during the broadcast. After the broadcast, hey, I heard you during the broadcast call a full Nelson suplex a dragon suplex. Is that a snapdragon suplex? Is that what we're calling this with this Japan style or Kenny Omega's name for it? Or why are we calling it that? And if you can figure that out, like, are we going, like, the old school or the new school? Like, what do we want to do? And sit with the guys, sit with JR, Excalibur, Tony, and Tony Khan, and sit around and be Mm -hmm. like, what do you want to do? You hired me, Jim Ross. Do you want Jim Ross, who knows the moves are called a certain thing? Or do you want Excalibur? You know, and and then maybe you could say, you know, well, 
you know, that is definitely what a huge uh, snap suplex, uh, full Nelson suplex there. Kenny Omega calls that the snap dragon suplex. And, you know, then from there on, we're going to, when when Kenny Omega does it, it's a snap dragon suplex. When anybody else does it, maybe it's a full Nelson suplex. You, but either way, whatever, I'm babbling on. I'm sorry, I'm babbling on. But the bottom line is so come good. up, agree on what you want to call things before you go out there instead of constantly calling it. You you both call it something different, and then when the other guy calls it his thing, you snarkily keep saying, like, oh, yeah, that's what it's called now. I'll remember these new phrases someday. What? Can you imagine working for Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon's and then Vince McMahon being like, that's not a, you know, a j- fucking jawbreaker, a jawjacker. It's a stunner or that's not a, you know, that's not a pile driver. It's a tombstone. You know, it's it's all these other things like it's what I can't even think of a good example. But you know what I mean? It's like that's not a super kick. No that's sweet chin music. It's not a super kick. It's like Vince McMahon would be like, you're fucking out of here. Like, no, like you're yeah. ca- I want it called yeah. this. It helps give wrestlers, uh, like, an identity to, like, call those specific moves, like, certain names and shit like that. I totally feel you there. Uh, and, yeah, and that's something that they should work out in the back. I mean, figure it out. Don't save it for air. It's so cringy when they mess up and talk over each other. And JR even apologized tonight to Excalibur, and I was just like, oh. I had secondhand fucking embarrassment for JR, and I feel so bad because, you know, he's a goddamn legend. But I don't know if he's, like getting drunk or what he reminds me of like Gordon Soley at the end of his like tenure when he was just like wasted and saying shit and babbling on. I think JR kind of like, uh, he, he idolizes Gordon Soley a lot and maybe he's just like, this is the tail end of my career. I don't give a fuck. I have nothing to prove. I'm just going to go out there and say what the fuck I want to say. But I don't know. The chemistry is kind of off. Uh, I don't know, man, but that's all I have to say tonight. Great show. Once again, thank you very much. Looking forward to tomorrow night. So thanks again. Yeah, man. Thank you. Good call. Good shit. Good idea. I didn't even think about that stuff, so I'm glad you brought it up. Great call. That is a full-on sexy call. That was a great call, man. I mean, he might have been moaning, but if he was, that's I'm cool with that, man. Definitely cool with that. Rest in peace to Rocky Johnson. Guys, can we get to 200 likes? I mean, this is this is pathetic. I mean, come on. This is fucking making me sad. Like, that's making me, uh, like, I mean, should I just end myself right now? I mean, come on. Like, come on. Are we serious? Steven Larson with 600 people watching them would have, like, 800 likes. Like, are we seriously at 166? Like, should I get the should I get the weapon now and just, should I blow my head off? Like, I mean, come on. What is going on here? Seriously. What is happening? Um, thank you to the, uh, $25 Patreon members. Much appreciated. Uh, we are the sexual beasts of the world. Rest in peace to, uh, Rocky Johnson. That's all I got for you guys. I will see you tomorrow for out of nowhere. So much wrestling news to talk about. Uh, we're almost at 200 likes. Oh my God. Thank God. At least 200 likes. Thank God. 200 likes at least. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Drew, what's up, Drew? Testicle Festival. We're going to the Testicle Festival, everybody. We're going to the Testicle Festival with Drew. Testicle Festival. (laughs) Testicle Festival. Hello. All right, Joe. What's going on, man? Two four nine on the phone. Hello, or two four two four eight. Two four eight. I can't read. It's all good. What's dude. going on, man? Hey, um, a couple things. Um, you were asking earlier about the girl that he was talking to in the ring, the dark-haired girl. Yeah, Decker. Yeah. Well, I don't think she goes by Decker. That's her husband's name. He's a famous baseball player, but if you want to see any information about her, her name's Jen Sturger. Oh, Jen Sturger. Yeah, the Brett Favre girl. Now I remember. Yeah. Yes, that's the Brett Favre girl. Yeah, dude. Isn't that hilarious? I remember doing, like, I want to say, like, almost 2010 or 8. Is that that long ago, or was it 2010, maybe? When that shit went down? Yeah, because I think I made a video about it on YouTube, like, fucking 10 years ago. Um, it was, sorry, it was, uh, in October of 2010 is when she made the report surfaced. Boom. Of it. 
Boom. I remember. Yeah, that's funny. I did a song about it like back in 2010 or something, some goofy, stupid thing on YouTube that like, you know, 3,000 people saw or something, and I was embarrassed. I was like, I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, it was it was funny back then. I remember that. <laughs> cool. Uh, yep, the other, I had a couple more things for you, real quick. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, where do you think the direction of Hangman Page is going? Because at first I thought they, he might be like a big star. He seemed like he might be that guy that, you know, that guy. He really reminds what? me of Rollins. I mean, I think that, I think he would be, I, I think he should, I think he'd be well served if he, if there was a mid card title, you know what I mean? And his whole like, let's do some cowboy shit. Like, and if he, so if he could be in like matches where like a ladder match for the intercontinental belt and he was doing cool stuff in those matches and having a good time and, you know, doing that stuff, having a fun time drinking, he's sort of like, kind of like a, like a new version of, uh. Uh, Bobby Robert Root or whatever you know like back from the beer money type of thing like he's got that vibe but recently okay. it's, he's got more of a Seth Rollins vibe to me and I feel like he needs to go heel and they're clearly teasing and teasing and teasing that and I don't know what that means I don't know if he's gonna go heel but I think being heel might serve him better at this point okay uh, another thing uh, um if you had your choice, because you know there's a lot of free agents about to break loose, and we just heard they got a bunch of money coming into EEW because yeah. of that new deal, who would you like to see be the order of that dark, the leader of the dark order? Ryback. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah. not not I really. Happen. I want to fucking finish everyone on there. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, no, I think that. Um, I honestly, I, I really do, and I know that Ryback hates me, but I, I honestly think Ryback would be pretty cool in AEW. Like, and then he, and he, and just being like a bully, like an asshole bully type of guy, like he was in WWE for that short period of time. I think that would really get over in AEW for some reason. But you know, I don't know. I know that's a weird choice, but you know, obviously, like Flip Gordon would be good. But I think Ring of Honor is going to lock him up, and I think they need to get. A couple more like big name guys or, or guys that can be main eventers, you know. I think maybe one more of those and a couple more mid card guys that are more serious and, you know, I don't know. Like I mean, I know that okay. What if cra Crazy Matt Hardy was the well? Leader okay, of the yeah. I mean, order. yes, I do want Matt Hardy in the AEW. Um, yeah, I don't know if that would be I, great. I don't know if like I don't know about maybe maybe Dark Order would be good. But I feel like just Matt Hardy just being there anyway would be fine too. Like even if he wasn't in Dark Order, even if he was just Broken Matt in AEW, that would be great. Like that there's a lot of talk they say behind the scenes that he's going to ask him to do this and do that. Say no, we're not doing that. No, we're not doing this. Oh AEW yeah, AEW would probably let him do whatever the hell he wants. You know, every time Matt brings stuff to WWE, they they've just shot it down. They like almost are annoyed by him at this point. Like they seriously are, and I think he's been nice. And now I think he's like. This is fucking stupid. I feel like that's how he feels now. That's that's why he's doing all that stuff on YouTube. You're seeing every day he's doing something on YouTube. He's trying to keep himself relevant until he leaves. He knows what he's doing. Sure. But, I yeah. mean, and his his brother will be his contract's over. I think in the middle of the summer. I think right. Yeah, that's they only care about Jeff. It seems like they just love Jeff, 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 Jeff. Jeff. And if if Jeff ain't there, Matt. Oh yeah, whatever, Matt. We don't care. And I know that the Young Bucks and both Matt and Jeff Hardy are friends, like in real life. Not right. Shoot, shoot, they're real friends. Okay, cool, man. It was good to talk to you. Have a good night. All right, man. Yeah, good shit. Yeah, those are those are good Peace. calls. Later. Yeah, I, I'd have to think about uh, who I'd want. Killer Cross will be pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty excited, but uh, yeah, man. I, I hate to I hate to give the guy money because he's been such a scumbag to me and kind of a weird dude. But Ryback would be hilarious in AEW as a guy just be like, "Yeah, you want to get in my face? I'm gonna finish you in front of everybody. Watch this. Watch what I do to you. I'm gonna fuck you up. I'm gonna break your hip. You want to see me break your hip like I broke CM Punk's nose? I'm gonna kill you now. Yeah." get in my fucking face let's do this i will finish it testicle festival testicle festival drew you fucking weirdo what kind of fucker says that super chat party what the fuck says testicle festival 7 p.m tomorrow the most yeah. obnoxious nxt review you'll hear
A, you can suck it. Right My back. girl tossed I'm gonna Baz be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there like, uh, I am going to be there, Spaz Phoenix, for your podcast tomorrow. It's going to be really good. Um, A, W, can suck it. Wow. Really? Are you really are you really saying that right now? Are you really going to say that right now? You're going to say AEW can suck it? How about you can suck it? How about this? Feed me more. Finish it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know it. When I say the words sex, I get really aroused. Do you understand how aroused I get when I say the word sex? Watch this. Ready? Are you fucking ready? Finish it. Sex. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I said it. Oh, 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 sex. Gurgle, gurgle. Right back. Roar. Yeah. Fuck yeah. FeedMeMore.com, Amazon, go to Amazon, order Fat Body, fat body Extreme Burner, yeah, Fat Body Burner, burn my body, yeah, finish it, yeah. fuck yeah. Are you ready? Testicle Festival. You're going to a testicle fucking festival. Drew is going to a testicle festival. What is he doing? Testicle Festival. Testicle Festival. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. Ooh, oh, I can come. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Ooh, oh, I can come. Testicle Festival. Ooh, oh, I can come. Testicle Festival. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. What have you got to show in your fucking DMs? Ooh, oh, testicle I can festival. Ooh. Shit bomb. We're going to the testicle. Jojo. Breaking news from a couple hours yeah, ago. Yeah. A new audio from a video after the Democratic debate surfaced last night between Bernie and Warren. Warren refused to shake Bernie's hand and then said he called her a liar. I tweeted it to you, please play. He probably should have called her a liar on national TV. National TV, Parker. We're going to the testicle festival. Testicle festival. Yo, Parker, I'll check it out, Parker, man. Yeah, becoming a $5 shit bum, man. Testicle festival. We're going to the testicle festival. festival. Testicle festival. Testicle festival. Testicle Festival. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. Testicle Festival. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. I'm a fucking idiot. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. Testicle Festival. Testicle Festival. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. Yummy. Ooh, oh, I can come. Ooh. All right, let's check out that video. Let's see here. I mean, why didn't if he called her a liar, why didn't he call her a liar on TV? Like, why didn't he be like, oh, yeah, the, so the, that was pretty much wrong. You're just pretty much ridiculous. You're being a liar. You're uh, lying about that. But instead, he does it behind the scenes. Dude, why doesn't why is Bernie Sanders such a fucking pussy? Why is he a pussy? I would have voted for him in 2016 if he didn't cuck out to Hillary. Oh, Hillary rigged the whole thing and stole the DNC and the, and they did all this shit. Oh, fuck it, I just, I'll just back away. <laughs> How about you fucking call people out already, Bernie dildo? If I was working for Bernie Sanders, I would, I'd make, I, I would, he would win the presidency. Bernie Sanders, give me a call. You'll become president, maybe. Or you'll have a chance, at least. Nobody has a chance on the Dems right now. Nobody does. But if I was in charge of Bernie, he, he'd have a chance. 
because I'd say, well, you know what we're going to do right now uh, is uh, we're going to we're going to now do something that I never did before. I sat back. I've been beaten down and beaten down and beaten down and been beaten up. And tonight I can see the bias here on CNN. I can see the bias of what's going on. I can see what's happening. So let me just call you a a lying cunt. How about that? <laughs> Like, like that'd be great. Like, let me just call you a liar, all right, Miss Indian Face. And uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, get some guy to, to to pay for your college education and then dump him for your your law teacher? How about that? Yeah, you're a really wholesome person. You're a real good person, aren't you? Oh, that's right, Pocahontas. Okay, now shut your dumb mouth and let the man speak. How about that, you whore? Hey, oh my God, your Bernie Sanders would become president. I think you called me a liar on national TV. What? I think you called me a liar on national TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion? We'll have that discussion. You called me. You told me. All right, let's not do it. I'm now. Not, I don't want to get in the middle of it. I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. That's what I said. I said this last night. I said this last night when we were talking about this on um on Throwdown. I said this over on Corrupted Nation last night. I said, why aren't they calling each other liars? Why are they sitting there just ignoring this? One of them just said he said something. The other one says he doesn't say it. Which somebody's a fucking liar. Somebody is a liar. Who's the fucking liar? Somebody's lying, and neither one of them called each other a liar. I said that. They're, calling, they're basically saying that some, they're each lying, but no one's saying who's lying. And nobody said it. Why didn't he be like, I, I, did, I did not say that. Everybody knows that I supported women because I've said it. It's on camera, and I did this and that. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, you're either misremembering or lying, and I don't know which one it is. I'm assuming misremembering because you've always been a great person to me that I know of, and I know that you wouldn't just make up something like that, so you must be misremembering. Uh, that I did not say that, uh, or Susan War or Elizabeth Warren could have been like, um, you're now saying that you didn't say that. You did say that. Maybe it's your age or something, but you are. You said that. You absolutely said that. I am not a liar. You said that. Neither one of them said any of that. They were just like, oh, back oh, I'm gonna say things and then back away. Um, but now we get this audio clip. Are you kidding me? I think you called me a liar on national I think TV. You called me a liar on national no. TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion? We'll have that discussion. You called me. You told me. All right, let's not do it. Now. Not, I don't want to get in the middle of it. I just want to say hi, Bernie. Yeah, good. Okay. I think uh, though. I don't know, man. I'm not really sure, but I'm almost starting to think that he did say that because she came at him like, "Did you call me a liar on national TV?" And then he's like. Well, I, okay. Well, let's not let's not do it now. Let's not. That tells me he did say that, which is weird because we gave her a harder time last night than we gave him. He fuck he, I think he said he might have said that because he cucked out there. He pussied out right there. She's like, "Did you call me a liar on national TV?" And then he's like, "Oh, l listen, you called me a liar. You shit bomb. We'll, we'll do it later. I don't know." Jojo, you got it all wrong. Bernie literally said on the debate stage last night that he never told Warren that a woman could not become president. I know. He 100 denied making that comment. He denied making the comment on stage. I know. If you watched my show on Throwdown last night, we talked about this. He denied it. She said he said it. Then he denied it. Somebody is lying. Somebody is lying. The fact is, somebody is lying, Parker. One of them is lying. And then after this was over, she came up to him and said, I believe you called me a liar on national TV. And then he said, well, you basically, that's what you did to me. You called me a liar. And well, we're not going to do that here. We're not going to, I'm not going to, we're not going to do that now. What? That's the first thing I would do. Yeah. Well, you're saying I said something I didn't say. So you're calling me a liar and making stuff up about me. Why are you doing that? But instead he's like, oh, we're not going to do it. What? What do you mean? This is fucking weird. These people are weird. I think you called me a liar on national TV. What? I think you called me a liar on national no. TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion? We'll have that discussion. You called me. You told me. Yeah, let's, let's, how about, let's have that discussion in front of the fucking American people that you're supposed to be fucking running for, you fucking idiots. Somebody is fucking lying, and we deserve to know who the fuck is lying. We deserve to know. Is it Polka Cunt Ass or Old Man River? Who the fuck is lying? We deserve to fucking know. 
That type of shit. I hope Trump wins again, you stupid fucks. Oh, oh, let's not do this now. And oh, you're a lie. I don't know. And I'm woman won't run. And, uh, oh, let's not do this. Let's do this somewhere else. All oh, behind the scenes. All oh, uh. how about we want to know now? You fucking run up on the fucking panel, you fucking idiots. As far as I'm concerned, now you're both fucking liars, and I'm not voting for you. I am not voting for you. I'm not voting for you, Miss Fucking. And I'm not voting for. Oh, do, 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 just don't. I'm gonna cuck out to a woman again. I'm gonna cuck out to a woman again. Oh. Yeah, not voting for you. Hope Trump wins, you fucking idiots. Ooh. Oh, I can't come. Ooh. Now go check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Honestly, podcast is up. Good night. Goodbye. Ow!